like a, a very good morning to all welcome you all ladies and gentlemen welcome one and all to the world national webinar on current trends in physics education and research being jointly organized by department of physics Government Degree College, Dharmanagar, and Department of Physics, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Shagar College, Bilodia, Tripura. It's a joint venture. Both the departments are happy to organize such type of webinar workshops in regular interval. During the pandemic situation, learning process were badly disturbed. Physical classes are stopped. This virtual platform is providing us to interact each other, showing views among the resource persons, interacting each other, and particularly the student community. I do hope and believe this particular national webinar also be helpful for the knowledge thrusting people in general and the student fraternity in particular. Without much delay, we are going to the program schedule of today. In today's program schedule, we have two sessions. Inaugural sessions will be followed by technical session. In the inaugural sessions, I am happy to share with you that we have with us Dr. N. C. Sharma Sir, Director, Department of Higher Education, Copt of Tripura as well as patron of this webinar. Due to his very busy schedule, for time being he is not able to present to the today's webinar. Uh, probably he will participate in this webinar a later stage, if time will permit him. Sri Gautam Das sir, principal in charge, Government Degree College, Dharmanagar. Sri Bimalandu Bush sir, Principal in charge, Ishwar Chandra Vidyashagar College, Bilonia, and President of this webinar, Dr. Rahul Bharcharji, Organizing Secretary of this webinar, and myself, Dr. Dr. Dash, convener of this national webinar. I am, <coughs> on behalf of entire organizing committee, have the privilege to welcome you all and request to be in the virtual diets. In the technical sessions, we have three presentations. We are happy that today we have with us three distinguished eminent personalities in their respective fields. Dr. Sudipta Nandi, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Cotton University, Gohati Asham. Dr. Anirvan Goho, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Tripura University. Dr. Oitri Dasumuk, Professor, Department of Physics, Assam University, Silja. I welcome Sarik Madam. You all in the national webinar and expressing my thanks and gratitude for joining and sparing your valuable time with us. Dear participant, once again, on behalf of entire organizing committee, I welcome one and all to this national webinar. Now I invite Dr. Rahul Varchachi, organizing secretary for this webinar, for his welcome speech. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, all. On the occasion of one day national webinar, I would like to welcome our patron, Sri N.C. Sharma, Director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tripura, President of the webinar, Dr. Vimalandi Ghosh, Principal Ishwar Chandra Vidyashagar College, Belonia, Vice President, Sri Gautam Das, Principal Government Degree College, Dharmanagar. I welcome all our esteemed resource persons of today's webinar, Dr. Atri Deshamukko, Professor, Department of Physics, Asham University, Silchar, Dr. Sudipta Nandi, Associate Professor, 
Department of Physics, Cotton University, Guwahati, and Dr. Anirvan Guho, Assistant Professor, Tripura University. Your presence in this webinar will motivate our students for higher education and research. I welcome all the participants, especially the students for whom we arranged this webinar. At last, I welcome all the faculty members of two colleges who joined this webinar as a participant. Now, the main objective of this webinar is to provide a platform for the young students and learners of Tibura and the rest of the country to do interact with the scholars in the field of physics and gather knowledge for the betterment of physics education and future research. It has been found that in last one or two decades, student enrollment in science education declined slowly. Also, the quality of education deteriorated exponentially. The reasons are many. One of the solution to the problem is that we should motivate the students and do make a platform so that they interact with the prominent persons in this field. It is a big challenge for the teaching community to impart quality to the students within the present framework of higher education. However, we are hopeful that such interactions will give one step forward for the development of higher education in India. For the last one and a half years, we are in a different world where all of us are confined within the home, where a physical class has been replaced by an online class. Teachers are developing e-content, sharing the knowledge using digital means. We find there are lots of challenges in the mindset of students, teachers, policymakers, and guardians. We are, we are united for one cause, that learning should not be stopped at any cost. As, as per situation demand, we also have to change ourselves for the betterment of society. However, inadequate net, network speeds, poor connectivity, and lack of electronic resources make the task difficult. From this webinar, we will be enlightened ourselves with the present trends in physics education and research. At our re request, the research person prepared their lecture in such a way that undergraduate students can easily comprehend the subject matter and find a solution in future education and research. Hope this webinar will be beneficial to all our participants. Thank you all for giving valuable support to make the webinar successful. Thank you, sir. Thank you a lot for a very, very good speech. Uh, with uh, very few words, beautifully you have explained what is the necessity of this national webinar. I am expressing my thanks and gratitude to you. Now I invite Sri Kotam Das, principal in charge, Convent Degree College, Thermonegar, to share a few words with us. Over to you, sir. Very good morning to all. Respected patron of today's national webinar, Sri N.C. Sharma sir, Director, Directorate of Higher Education, Government of Tripura. Respected President of this webinar, Dr. Bimalandu Ghosh sir, Principal, Isha Chandra Vida Shagar College, Bilonia. Convener, Dr. Raghunandan Das sir, Organizing Secretary, Dr. Rahul Bhattacharji, sir, and all members of the organizing committee from both colleges. Respected speakers, Dr. Sudipta Nandi, sir, Associate Professor, Cartoon University, Gohati, Asham, Dr. Onirvan Goho, Assistant Professor, Tipura University, Dr. Otri Deshmukh, Professor, Asham University, Shilchar. All participants, respected colleagues from both colleges and my dear students. On behalf of Government Degree College Dharmanagar, I welcome you all on today's one-day national webinar on current trends in physics education and research, jointly organized by Government Degree College Dharmanagar and Isha Chandra Vidyashar College Bilunia, Tripura. I am very much thankful to the principal of Isha Chandra Vidya Shagar College, who is also the president of this webinar for this joint venture. I also thankful to Director Sir, 
who is not able to attend this program due to his busy schedule but he sent his good wishes and the grand success of this webinar thank you sir for your wholehearted support physics education and research is a form of discipline based education research specifically related to the study of the teaching and learning of physics often with the aim of improving the effectiveness of students learning to develop pedagogical techniques and strategic that will help students to learn physics more effectively and help instructors to implement their techniques we are very much thankful to our research persons for their positive response from both the colleges we honor your spirit we will listen we will attend your lectures presentations discussion which will benefit and enrich the knowledge of our participants i wish the grand success of this one day national webinar wish you good health and safety i conclude my speech and thank you all once again thank you thank you sir for your beautiful words you has been always inspiring your inspiring words are very uh, much useful for us you are leading us from the front from uh, conducting such type of seminars workshops and others so we are expressing our thanks and gratitude to you sir now i invite i am happy to invite dr nobelendu hussar principal in charge ishwar chandra vidyasagar college bellonia for his presidential speech over to you sir okay good morning everybody respected patron of today's webinar sri nc sharma director department of higher education government of tripura who is at present uh, absent vice president sri gautam das principal government degree college dharmanagar the resource person of today's seminar uh, sorry today's webinar dr achri deshmukh professor department of physics assam university silchar dr sudipta nandi associate professor department of physics cotton university guwahati assam dr onirban guho assistant professor department of physics tripura university and all the participants of this webinar on behalf of the president of organizing committee i welcome all in this one day webinar jointly organized by department of physics ishwar chandra vidyasagar college bilonia and department of physics government degree college dharmanagar i congratulate organizing secretary dr rahul bhattacharya associate professor department of physics ishwar chandra vidyasagar college bilonia convener dr raghunandan das assistant professor department of physics government degree college dharmanagar and all the members of the organizing committee for organizing such webinar which is jointly organized by these two colleges in the last one and half year due to covid 19 all the schools and colleges are closed throughout the world over 1.2 billion students are out of traditional classroom as a result education has changed dramatically with the distinctive use of e learning whereby teaching is undertaken remotely and on digital platform with the sudden shift away from the classroom in many parts of the globe someone <coughs> are wondering whether the adoption of online learning will continue to persist post pandemic and how such a shift would impact the worldwide education system while some believe that unplanned and rapid move 
to online learning without training in sufficient bandwidth and little preparation will result a poor user experience that is unconductive to <coughs> sustained growth. Others believe that new model of education will emerge with significant benefits. I believe that the integration of information technology in education will be further accelerated and that online education will become an integral part of our education system. The conduction of such webinar in the context is one of the right steps forward where students do interact with the educationists of different institutions. I invite all the participants who are registered in this webinar listen thoroughly. I hope all of you will be benefited by the listening of our resource person. I wish successful conduction of the webinar. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your beautiful words. You explained what is the current situations of the world, how we are conducting our classes in the virtual platforms, what is the advantages of uh, uh, teaching through the virtual platforms and what is the uh, is, uh, physical platforms classes. So actually many ways uh, we are uh, get benefited for your valuable speech, valuable presentations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, you are from the front, you are leading, you are inspiring uh, for uh, conducting such type of uh, seminar workshops. For that, we are really thankful to you, sir. Thankful to the College of Unity. Now, as uh, our NC sir is not able to join to this uh, webinar, but he has given us good wishes. I received very good wishes, beautiful words from him. So we are always thankful to him. So now, without delay, I am going to offer proof of thanks for the inaugural session. So once again, good morning to all. On behalf of organizing committee, I am grateful to all. I sincerely ex expressing my thanks and gratitude to principal in charge, ICVC Bellonia, Sri Bhimanandu Kursar, and Sri Gautam Dasha, principal in charge, Community College Dharmanagar, for leading us from form and inspiring us for providing support in all of this path, for organizing such type of national international events. We are really thankful to our director, sir, sir N.C. Sharma, sir, for spare, uh, though he is not able to come, but he has expressed his best wishes to us on that we are expressing our thanks and gratitude. I am expressing my thanks and gratitude to all the distinguished learned personalities in my as invited speaker of today's webinar. Sorry uh, for uh, the disturbance. Uh, Dr. Sudipto Nandi, sir, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Cotton University, Asham. Dr. Anirban Goho. Sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Tripura University. Dr. Poitri Deshmo, Professor, Department of Physics, Assam University, Sincha. We are eagerly waiting to listen to you, sir and madam. Today, really, we are thankful to you for sparing your time for this beautiful occasion. I am also wish to thank Dr. Rahul Bacharji, organizing secretary, for his hard work for making this event a successful one. I am thankful to all the members of the organizing committee for their active support. My special thanks goes to all the participants. Without their active participation, this program would not be a successful one 
We are looking forward for all of your active participation in tactical sessions also to make this program a great success. So last but not the least, I am expressing my thanks and gratitude to all the persons who have somehow expressed their support, extended their support for making this event a successful one. So thanking you all, welcoming you all for the next technical session. So without delay, we are uh, going to start the technical session. So for that, we are taking one or two minutes for the little So thank you all. Thank you all for being with us. Uh, sorry for the network inconvenience. Um, uh, due to some network problem, uh, we are out of some few, mom few moments of time. Now, um, our inaugural session is over. So we will start our technical session. And technical sessions, as you know, three resource persons we have. And Dr. Sudip Tanandi from uh, Cotton University, uh, Dr. Onirvan Guho from Tripura University, and Dr. Atri Deshamuk from Asha University Silchar. So uh, because of our director sir also absent, so uh, we are forwarding our technical session. So let us uh, start our technical sessions. As you know, the technical sessions, three experts will speak on the three fields and three university also. So first of all, I introduce uh, our first speaker. Today, our first speaker is Dr. Sudip Tanandi. Uh, Dr. Sudip Tanundi did his PhD from IIT Kohati and postdoctoral fellow from IIP Bhubaneswar. He joined as a lecturer in physics in Cotton College, Kohati, in the year 2003. Currently, this college has been converted into university, Cotton University. So he is now working as associate professor in Cotton University. His research interest in nonlinear physics, nonlinear phenomena, nonlinear optics, optical solitons. So I request sir to introduce uh, to introduce her lect his lectures, and also also uh, request him to continue. Uh, as a uh, at time schedule, as per time schedule, he will continue and uh, address the 
gathering so over to you sir uh, thank you rahul very much uh, good morning all uh, the patron of this program uh, mr nc sharma director uh, director of higher education government of tripura uh, sri gautam das principal sri uh, bibolendu ghosh principal of icbc belunia college and uh, dr raghunandan das the current convener of this program and uh, guest speakers the colleagues and uh, the dear students uh, very good morning to all of you uh, today uh, i am speaking uh, in front of it keeps it keeps me a uh, very it gives me a great pleasure to be able to speak in front of you thanks to uh, the organizing secretary rahul bhattacharji before i start on my topic uh, i would like to give a brief introduction of the institute uh, to which i am attached to i have a small presentation on that institute after i give that i'll switch over to my topics of uh, you know, lecture so let me just uh, go to that Okay, so this is my university. It's called Cotton University, and you can see the emblem of this university. And there are different uh, part in this emblem is there, and uh, you can see three colors. One is saffron color, which uh, represents the renunciation, and uh, the green color represents the peace, and uh, the blue color, which uh, represents that uh, liberal uh, mind. And the motto of this university is. to our knowledge in any field so this is a picture of the main building of the cotton university and uh, we know that uh, this is one of the premier institute in the educational institute in the northeast india and it has excelled in providing higher education to the people of the northeast india for more than a century maintaining maintaining its high quality at present the vc of the cotton university is professor bhavesh chandra goshami he did phd from university of liverpool united kingdom earlier to that he also did phd in uh, phd in guwahati university in the uh, in chemistry okay so this is a little bit uh, about history of the cotton uh, university which was earlier cotton college in his 121 years of history it was a cotton it was a college for more than 116 years and only 4 years it has been uh, existing as university so this was established in the year 1901 and uh, the name the first i mean the name of this cotton college came after i mean it was, this was named after the then chief commissioner of assam sir henry jones statement cotton and the existence of this college actually uh, came through a letter from the one noted uh, educationist uh, at the in assam that is manik chandra borua who wrote a letter to the then commissioner sir john henry statement cotton and in reaction or in response to his letter this uh, this college came into existence frederick william sudmarson was the first principal of this cotton college there is a statue of is uh, Sud, uh, Frederick William uh, Sudmarson in front of a hall that is called uh, Sudmarson Hall which is adjacent to the physics department of Cotton University now it started with only five professors and uh, 39 students and only with five departments so it uh, physics was of course one of these five departments it has seen many changes over the years and uh, 
1969, first this PG PAT curriculum was introduced in under Guwahati University was introduced. Earlier it was a college till 1969. Then it becomes a college with a PG curriculum. And then uh, in, in 1992, Dr. Sankal Dayal's, Dr. Sankal Dayal's, Shankar Dayal Sharma, then president of India, declared this center as a center of excellence to recognize his uh, its uh, role in imparting quality education to the people of the Northeast India. In 2001, Cotton uh, College celebrated a uh, centenary year. And uh, in the 2002, as a mark of uh, uh, its role as providing uh, quality higher education and also to commemorate the centenary celebration, a postage stamp was issued by the postal department. In that postage stamp, we can see the old structure of uh, this uh, Cotton College. Some of them are still there. OK, there are some rapid development in last uh, two, three centuries, two, three uh, decades of this uh, Cotton College. So in uh, 2015, this Cotton College was declared as a heritage college by uh, UGC. And there were almost uh, altogether 60 applicants out of these 60 applicants, 19 applicants, 19 applications were shortlisted. And out of the 19 applicants, Cotton College could uh, fetch the maximum amount an amount of 4.35 crores has been sanctioned to preserve the heritage structures. Uh, when in, among these heritage structures are this chemistry department, which is one of the, there is one very old building is there in the chemistry department. And then you have this principal's quarter, that is another old structure. And also you have another uh, building that is called new arts building, which is adjacent to the physics department. So to reconstruct or renovate these structures, so this amount has been uh, given. And another uh, 35 lakhs was given for the documentation. There are very old documentation. And among this documentation, some documentation like uh, the communication of uh, this uh, uh, Sudmarsan to the uh, Viceroy of, of India about the status of this education in Nasham. So many letters are there, which are actually in very uh, vulnerable state. So to preserve those for 35,000, 35 lakhs crores was uh, given. Then Cotton College uh, has seen some phase of turbulence, like uh, in 2012, Cotton College was divided into two parts. One is Cotton College, and then other part is Cotton College State University. Although two uh, started acting all independently, but uh, the education was same. I mean, well, the faculties of the Cotton College and faculties of the Cotton University, they both used to teach uh, say MSc, BSc, including this higher secondary, everything. But uh, these two are uh, basically two different identities. And the idea actually didn't succeed separating this Cotton College into two different identity. This idea was not uh, actually was not successful. And uh, uh, then uh, in 2007, this Cotton College actually applied for a NAC accreditation. In fact, it uh, Cotton College also uh, earlier also was um, not NAC accredited. Um, on two earlier occasions, and in 1917, it was invited NAC, and it uh, it got one of the highest uh, score in the NAC accreditation, that is A plus, and the score is about 3.70. That is that is considered to be one of the uh, highest uh, score in NAC accreditation. So it was very successful in uh, putting up a good image, uh, quality image of this Cotton College, and uh, together with other factors, the government decided to upgrade this Cotton college and merge this cotton college cotton college and cotton college state university into a single identity that is cotton university okay if i don't say about some noted alumni of cotton college uh, it will be it will be uh, little incomplete so there are there are many i mean there are a large number of uh, alumni are there who have left some marks in the society through their works and among them is of course this uh, bupen hajarika whom we everybody know. And uh, he has received the highest Indian uh, uh, civil award, uh, that is called the, called the Bharat Ratno. He was awarded Bharat Ratno posthumously in the year 2019. And another, another alumni of Cotton College who was also awarded is Bharat Ratno. He is uh, Kopinath Vartaloi. He was awarded in the year 1999. 
along with them we have uh, we have uh, three chief minister uh, excluding uh, Gopinath Bardoli, uh, who was alumni of Cotton College. So Sarath Chandra Sinha was the chief minister of Assam from 1972 to 1978. Then Hitesh Karmasri Hitesh Shoikya, who was the chief minister of Assam from 1983 to 85. And then again, another stint, 1991 to 96. And of course, the present chief minister of Assam, uh, who is chief minister from 2021. He, he also, uh, I mean, he was alumni of Cotton College since his uh, HS days. He did his HS, then degree, then master's from Cotton University, Cotton College. Okay, some other noted alumni are the scientist who was who has, uh, a very renowned scientist. One is uh, this Jitendra Nath Goswami, who has received the Santi Sarup Patnagar Award, one of the few recipients from this Northeast India. And another is Bhupendranath Goswami, he is also a Santi Saru Patnagar Awardee. Currently, Bhupendranath Goswami is uh, attached to our Cotton University. And there are many other elements whom I didn't mention, but they are worth actually mentioning in any presentation, like uh, this woman, Owen Borgwai, noted literary person from Assam. Then we have this Mamuni Raisam Goswami. They have received numerous awards due to their work. And uh, of course, I should mention here. I take the privilege to mention here that uh, our uh, this uh, organizing secretary Rahul Bhattacharya was also an alumni of this uh, institution. Okay, so while talking about this Cotton University, I should uh, speak a little bit about uh, this physics department because I am attached to physics departments. The physics department is uh, uh, one of the 24, uh, I, I have missed one slide here, so somehow it is missing, but uh, anyway, it, it, physics department is, is one of the 28 departments in uh, Cotton University, and its current strength is undergraduates, there are 60 number of students get admission in each year, and there are uh, 30 number of students for uh, uh, this get admission for PG course, and at present there are uh, uh 24 numbers total phd student which started only from the years 2018 so at present we have 24 phd students in physics department so we had actually one more uh, picture uh, which is missing here so in that uh, so what are the different uh, things that are available uh, okay should i okay what are the different uh, facilities available available at the Cotton University? Cotton uh, uh, Cotton University now. So it, it was given there. Basically, it was like we have some uh, of, uh, we have some one uh, seminar hall, state of art state of the art seminar hall, and we have some uh, seven uh, classrooms, and uh, we have very well equipped undergraduate and postgraduate labs, and. Uh, so far, we have very, uh, very limited, limited uh, facilities of research, but uh, it is it is coming up, and, uh, uh, it, and there is a there is two three very groups uh, which are, who are very working very good in this uh, in this lab. One is your is group led by the uh, professor Bhupendranath Shami. So there are few other groups which uh, actually are working some good works here and have some good publications. Anyway, so for uh, this is a brief introduction of the university. To, uh, if you are interested to know more about the Cotton University, you can visit this website. It's https cottonuniversity.ac.in. And uh, thank you on behalf of the Cotton University. Okay, so next I next I with this next I move to my presentation. That is today's topic okay okay I hope I am audible and you can see the screen that I am presenting. Uh, uh, I hope you can see it. 
and uh, in, if you not please uh, please uh, i will request organizing secretary to inform me through phone or because my screen is now the presentation so if any problem is there please let me know then i will see what is the problem okay so the uh, title of my topics that i have chosen to present uh, in front of this uh, pg basically this my audience i i was told my audience is bsc student and uh, this msc student so and of course uh, other guests so i have one i i just uh, kept my presentation uh, a little uh, little uh, wide so that uh, through this presentation actually i would like to give a uh, a uh, little introduction in the about the field in which i am working and uh, this is not exactly a technical presentation so uh, many of my uh, results of course uh, i'll present uh, but along with my results i'll present also others result of course uh, the sources uh, will be mentioned so it's it's like a total introduction about the field that uh, in which i am uh, working So next page, how to go to the next page. So, so this is the a sequence of the presentation that I'm going to speak in another 30 minutes or so. So first I'll talk about this Solidon. I'll give a brief introduction and historical background of this, this Solidon, how it came into existence. Then I'll discuss some properties of soliton i'll try to uh, avoid as much as possible math mathematics as much as possible so then i'll talk to about uh, some uh, optical soliton which has got some analogy with uh, these other solitons this basically your uh, this uh, we call it uh, gravity soliton and then we'll talk about another uh, another identity that is called vector solitons there are many solitons but i'll confine myself to only two or three types of solitons okay so after talking about solid and i'll just go to what is raw waves and i'll give a brief introduction about the raw waves <coughs> and i'll tell uh, sorry i'll tell uh, the the, intro, uh, the the brief uh, historical background of the raw waves then i'll just come to the, some analogy of these raw waves ocean raw waves with the optical raw waves then some uh, some optical phenomena where we can see these raw waves are we'll talk about that which is Super one is super continuum generation, another is raw wave in uh, this graded index fiber. There are many other uh, optical uh, phenomena where you can see raw waves, but I will mention I will confine to only these two, so that you can get a very uh, clear idea about what a raw wave is. Okay, let us start with this uh, this uh, soliton idea. So before we talk about soliton, just let us uh, look at what is actually this surface wave. So this is the picture of a uh, wave that is generally visible when we uh, visit a beach like a wave is approaching the approaching the beach and we call such kind of wave as a gravity wave this is very common scene okay this picture has been taken from wikipedia okay so gravity wave basically we tell a wave as a gravity wave uh, which actually is uh, seen in the in some inter in, uh, in some interface between two uh, fluid medium one is so in this case it is uh, the two mediums are one is uh, this water and the other is air and this is uh, this wave is created on the interface of air and water so it's, uh, by definition it's a gravity wave so study of gravity wave is uh, not new which has been uh, scientists have been scientists basically mathematicians mathematicians have been studied this gravity wave long since long and uh, there are some uh, some well known uh, mathematician who have uh, have have done some seminal work on this gravity wave one is george airy then you have uh, george uh, george stokes navier and other so many so many renowned mathematicians are there who have done some commendable work in this field but the one entity that uh, actually had changed the whole field of this uh, gravity wave or wave as a whole that is called a solidon so the existence of solidons how it came actually has a long interesting history so i just uh, whenever such uh, whenever there is a presentation on uh, this uh, kdv kdv equation or this solidon such uh, this story actually inevitably comes because actually the uh, the first person who has noticed such thing is john scott russell and uh, 
but uh, the recognition actually went uh, to some other mathematician who actually had derived it so unless i tell you the story uh, this uh, credit of this uh, john scott russell uh, is not uh, fully given to him okay it all started with some uh, observation by a, a naval architect whose name is uh, john scott russell he is an english british person one day he was uh, traveling by the side of a canal and uh, he had uh, seen some something very uh, unusual uh, motion in some water so in his words what he observed so i was observing the motion of a boat you can see on this uh, screen i was observing the motion of a boat which was rapidly drawn along a narrow channel by a pair of horses when the boat suddenly stopped not so the mass of water in the channel which it had put in motion it accumulated around the prow of the vessel that is boat in a state of a violent agitation then suddenly leaving it behind rolled forward with great velocity assuming the form of a large solitary elevation a rounded smooth well uh, defined heap of water which continued its course along the channel apparently without the change of its form and diminution of speed you can see the picture which was not of course the uh, seen uh, the incident narrated by john scott russell this is uh, some this regenerated uh, wave here uh, by a group of mathematicians of edinburgh university there you see some kind of elevation just in front of the boat you can see some kind of water elevation in the form of a wave okay so this was basically what uh, john scott russell was tried to narrate but after he reported this uh, he came back home and he tried to regenerate this kind of wave in his backyard he tried to he tried he created one uh, one tank a 30 inch tank and uh, he just did some experiments and uh, although he revealed many of the things like what is the velocity of this uh, velocity of this uh, this wave and what is the relation between the velocity and the height of the wave but he could not come up with a, a solid mathematical model and because of that his uh, whatever he had observed whatever he has reported the mathematician of at that time did not accept him well and uh, at that time two of the greatest mathematician those both of uh, of english origin one is uh, george airy another is george stokes george stokes of course he was an irish mathematician at the time, George uh, Airy had some commendable, uh, uh, commendable work on this uh, flow of water in presence of light. He gave some mathematical theory, and that theory could explain many phenomena in uh, this many many phenomena about this gravity wave. Not of course this kind of wave, other kind of wave. Basically, he considered uh, implicit liquid means uh, there is no. I mean, he ignored uh, the viscosity of the liquid and it is uh, irrotational flow also he didn't consider but uh, through his theory he could explain many uh, many such uh, phenomena of uh, these gravity waves and according to him this long wave which was uh, this wave that uh, john scott russell observed is actually in mathematical language is called a long wave means the length of the wave is large in com or large or comparable to the depth of water in canal the depth of water is small so the, the length of the water is comparable or large compared to the depth of the water. Such wave is called long wave. So according to Eddie's mathematical theory, such long wave cannot exist for a long time. It should break immediately. As soon as it is formed, it should break. But uh, the report of John Scott Russell was a little different. He said the wave, this wave lasted for a long time and it traveled almost about 30 feet, which was very large time. So another scientist uh, is called George Stokes, and George Stokes is famous for his uh, this master equation called Navier-Stokes equation, and that, that equation actually uh, is the master equation of all fluid dynamical phenomena. Okay, so he's famous for that, and Stokes at that time also didn't consider so such kind of things can happen or such kind of waves is possible. So they actually disapproved this John Scott Russell's observation. But of course, after a long time, there was a change of tide. He, he made this observation in the year of 1934. Then another, then another mathematician, a French mathematician, whose name is Joseph Bozinesque, he, in 1977, supported the existence of the concept of wave of translation 
okay uh, john scott russell uh, termed his observation as the wave of translation so john uh, uh, joseph bosonesky has supported the that uh, there might be some such kind of wave as as narrated by sir john scott russell okay and uh, then actually he couldn't give uh, the the proper solution of that equation but he also he had given some uh, equation but uh, the finally uh, this porto egg gave rise to two dutch mathematician these are two different person one is porto egg and one is de vries they together derived an equation which is now known as the kdv equation and they have seen they have shown that the solution of kdv equation which they called the solitary wave and solitary the properties of the solitary wave in many ways are similar to the property of wave of translation that was reported by john scott russell okay so according to their uh, according to their observation do the the the, uh, the mathematical equation that uh, kdv was had derived I, I don't want to go into much details of this uh, mathematical equation because for bsc and msc student it might be a little uh, advanced but what i want to mention here i just uh, try to identify the terms present here so in the in the second term you see there are there is some uh, x derivative i mean this partial represents the derivative with respect to x there are three x derivatives these are basically called a dispersive term and it causes dispersion in the wave a dispersion in the wave means it just suppose uh, suppose it uh, it has got some width a dispersion means it will broaden the wave it will increase the width of the uh, wave and if you see the last term which is six psi x psi it's basically a non-linear term that means the fundamental difference with earlier theory given by Stokes theory and other uh, Stokes, I mean, Air, George Airy and others or Laplace. The fundamental difference here is he introduced a nonlinear term here that is psi x psi. Okay. So because of this, this uh, kind of this, this, this nonlinear term actually basically responsible for this uh, breaking of this, uh, responsible for uh, I mean, this prevention of breaking of the pulse, okay, which uh, George Airy told it should break. And because of this nonlinear term, the wave actually doesn't break. And uh, the solution of this equation that uh, KDV had given is of the form of minus C by 2. It is a sec hyperbolic square, square root of C by 2, X minus CT. Means, you see, just look at the term X minus CT. We can immediately figure out this is a traveling wave. Okay, X minus CT type wave we call a traveling wave. It means it's... Uh, it's uh, it's moving with certain uh, fixed velocity or we can move either can say static or we can move with the uh, velocity c so that we can see yeah i'm i, I, I can i'm moving with uh, the frame anyway there are there are many important points here to uh, note here so one is uh, according to this uh, the, this theory this uh, if you look at the solution uh, the wave is, is said chiral okay we do not uh, need to know much about this chiral uh, what is chiral this one uh, mathematical word chiral means basically wave moves only in, along one direction okay it cannot move in the opposite direction right okay the next one is velocity is proportional to white which is very uh, uh, very very uh, evident from the expression here psi is equal to c by 2 uh, the term in term in front of that sec hyperbolic uh, term which is minus c by 2 so c appears is c appears there c is the velocity of the wave so your amplitude okay so amplitude is directly proportional to the height right here c is the velocity x minus ct is the c is the velocity here so velocity is related to the height so that is one of the characteristic of the solitary wave and this was also observed by sir john scott russell right Okay, this is a, just a plot of this uh, KDV wave, how it looks. Basically, this is a localized. Localized means uh, it, it is not infinitely spread. You see, as x, as if, if you go x, uh, large x, that means it just uh, the, the amplitude becomes zero. It has been taken at a, at a some fixed time, say time t is equal to zero. And it's just localized, some bell shaped structure. I'll show you some uh, point how it moves, when it moves, how it looks. Okay. Okay. So, but uh, so far after KDB equation, uh, it was known that uh, the observation of John, uh, John Scott Russell was actually uh, basically a solitary wave. But some there are some more uh, interesting properties of solitary wave, which which was revealed only after some uh, phenomenal work by 
two teams. One is uh, uh, Norman Jabuski and, uh, of course, Martin Kruskal, uh, who in uh, 1965 did some computational work with this equation. And, and uh, from their computational work, some further properties of solitons was uh, revealed. And along with that, in uh, 1967, uh, four persons, Gardner, Green, Kruskal, and Mura, they have analytically solved that equation. Out of this, I just want to take the opportunity to mention this Kuskal is called the father of Solidon because of he is attached to both the groups. Okay, so I had the opportunity to meet Kuskal once in a Simpa school uh, in Pondicherry. He visited that uh, institute in 2002, and at that time he was 80 years old. Okay, so it was very uh, pleasant to uh, uh, meet with him. Anyway, so after this uh, this phenomenal work by two teams, one is Due to the one is uh, the computational study of this uh, solitary wave equation that is KDV equation, another is some analytical uh, study, analytical study of this KDV equation. Okay, some further properties are uh, disclosed, and out of these properties, the striking properties are so it goes undisturbed. So undisturbed means it can go long, uh, long uh, distance without getting uh, uh, without breaking up or without getting distorted. As, as as narrated by john scott russell so so this is one of the very interesting property of skeleton next is the uh, many soliton solution we'll, we'll just give a demonstration uh, through net uh, what is many soliton solutions and this was actually possible through the analytical study made by kruskal and other in that team so another very uh, one of the most most interesting properties is the particle nature of this wave. Although they are wave, they behave like particle. It means uh, when two particles interact with each other, if if two particles interact with each other, I mean we see that both particles remain their uh, identity in X. For example, two balls when they interact with each other, they they hit each other and they again get separated, but the identity of two balls remain intact. Similarly, in case of solitons, two waves when interact. Okay, after collision, as if they just uh, they just didn't meet each other, they remain their identity. Okay, then along with this, there are many other properties. I haven't mentioned all, but one I want to would just like to uh, mention here. This, it has got some mathematical importance. This kind of uh, system has got uh, some conserved quantities, and in fact, in this kind of system, we call it integrable system or soliton system. They have infinite number of conserved quantities or many number of conserved quantities. Okay, if you are uh, if, since you are studying physics in undergraduate, you, you are familiar with classical mechanics. So there you have, might have started conservation of energy, conservation of momentum. So this is a kind of system where this uh, there is conservation of mass, there is conservation of energy, there is conservation of momentum, and along with all this, there are infinite more conserved quantities are there. Okay. Okay, here we have some link to show actually how these uh, the solitons interact with each other. I hope it will work. Uh, Okay, here you see this is taken from Wikipedia. On the top of the line, you can see some simulation. Two solitons are approaching each other of different heights. And the upper one, the upper one is moving a little fast. This is actually they are moving relatively. The upper one is moving a little faster, and the smaller, smaller wave, which is on the now left hand side, is moving a little slower. Okay, and just after interaction, they just uh, remain retain the identity, right? They, they, as if nothing has happened to them. This is, of course, this one dimensional sim simulation. Okay, so so this is how they interact, as if uh, they just meet each other, and after interaction, nothing have happened. Okay, so I just want to keep a few more seconds so that you can see it properly. Okay. Okay, so let me go back again to this slide. I was at uh, this page. Okay, so this is about this uh, uh, gravity soliton or this uh, soliton in water wave soliton. So now the next thing is that uh, sudden, um, it is not as uh, sudden. I mean, there are uh, there there have been many people have been working to try to see whether these water waves can be uh, can be uh, does have any analogy in the optical uh, field optical waves okay so actually the question is is it possible to create a robust soliton like uh, optical paths like that we have seen already the soliton is a very robust object 
so before we uh, just go to the uh, what we go to you know go to know what is actually an optical fault on is let us just uh, see one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, say example where these solitons may be applicable see like optical communication fiber communication so let us just try to understand what actually uh, what is there what is the principle behind the uh, optical fiber communication so in optical fiber communication basically based on the principle of total internal reflection we are aware we are familiar with this what is total internal reflection total internal reflection means if light is incident at an angle greater than the critical angle then light uh, just gets uh, reflected back into the same medium so the uh, based on this uh, principle this fiber uh, works and one can send optical light or optical signal monochromatic basically people send monochromatic signals okay through optical uh, fiber so that uh, in the other end of the fiber you can see the original original pulse right but uh, in the optical uh, fiber the one uh, fundamental drawback is the dispersion dispersion as i told you earlier in, while talking about this gravity wave dispersion the effect of dispersion is just widening the pulse right so in what is pulse if we if we just explain what is pulse pulse is basically your uh, some uh, chopped light suppose you switch on a torch then it gives you a, i mean some uh, continuous light but if you can chop if you can chop this light into some just switch on switch off switch on switch off so that is basically how chopping is chopping of light is done so i mean this uh, optical pulse are uh, basically this chopped pulse right so in communication what happens in the second figure you see so when it pass pass through a fiber it uh, the fiber offers a different velocity for different frequency different reflective index for the different frequency as a result suppose a pulse you have a pulse it has got three four frequencies or may, it may be it may have more frequencies okay it is a combination of large number of frequencies so what happens because it the because the medium offers different refractive index to different pulse so they travel at different velocities so since they travel at different velocities so initially whatever be the shape of the pulse they get this they get distorted like you see in the left there is input pulse to to a distinctly separated to input pulse is there but once it goes through the fiber medium they just get overlapped now what happens when they overlap this overlapping actually causes some loss of information so what is information basically we uh, send signal the uh, signals are sent through optical fiber fiber in the form of some bit okay a bit means so you have some binary bits like one and zero binary number kind of thing if there is a pulse we say the its value is one if there is a gap between the pulse that gap region is called zero suppose you want to send a number say two two means you are sending one i mean two consecutive two number you want to send that means how you send that means you have this two means binary it is one and zero so suppose again you want to send one and zero so basically you will have a pulse then you have to have some gap gap that is zero then you will have again another pulse that means another one and again you have gap zero now if this dispersion pre is present in the medium so what happens after traveling say few kilometers okay depending on the fiber how much it will uh, pass then this gap in the two pulse will uh, will narrow down and uh, at, at, the, at the end these two pulse will overlap so that is basically a information loss means you are sending input as two and two and the output you will get some one everywhere okay so you are not getting the original signal now what is the way out how to solve this and the solution is basically if you introduce some uh, uh, non linearity terms okay into this uh, dispersion into the uh, which can counter this dispersion effect then there are chances that your pulse will uh, remain same so in that effort uh, a scientist hasegawa who is uh, who worked in uh, bell lab okay bell lab is one of the uh, uh, research institute which has produced many uh, nobel laureates and this is one place where all these uh, outstanding uh, photonics and uh, optics researchers had worked there okay so this is the uh, he just gave an uh, introduced an equation which is called the nonlinear schrodinger equation and uh, if you just look at this equation and if you are familiar with schrodinger equation you can see the first two parts of this equation is basically like schrodinger equation right 
So it says I into E is the amplitude of the field. Z, differentiation with respect to Z, plus some sigma, we just ignored that part. But uh, another you have E X X, that means partial difference with respect to X two times. So this basically, if we just compare the Schrodinger's equation, the second term is basically our dispersion term. Okay, it causes dispersion to the pulse. Right, and along with that, you have some other terms, which is the nonlinear term. We call it nonlinear because here the term is basically the power of the field is basically cube. Mod d square into e means e cube type of time. Now this how this uh, term has been brought has been added in this equation. This term has brought uh, added into this equation by considering this uh, intensity dependent refractive index term. Here n represents the uh, refractive index of the medium. Okay, and this is equal to n naught, which is the fixed refractive index. Like glass has some fixed refractive index, which is such kind of refractive index n naught. And along with that, you have some intensity. I means intensity means which is proportional to e square. Some intensity dependent refractive index is also there, right? So when you consider this term, so this in the equation of motion you have another term which is nonlinear term that is two into e square e. So that actually causes to, to prevent this dispersion. Okay. So if I just do not add this term, nonlinear term, then any pulse which is insert, which which if you uh, insert through a fiber after some distance, it will disperse. Okay. So and if this dispersion term is not there, if you just uh, only if you just account only this uh, nonlinear term, then what will happen? Because of the nonlinearity, the pulse will stiffen. Okay. It will be narrowed down. Okay, so they have actually two opposite effects. Now the question is, since they two have opposite effects, can there be a form? So can there be some pulse which is very stable whose width remain fixed? The answer is yes. Okay, so when this nonlinearity, this third term counterbalances the dispersion caused by the second term. Okay, when they exactly balance each other, such kind of pulse may be formed, such stable kind of pulse may be formed, which we call say optical soliton, okay, like your your like your this gravity soliton. There are several kinds of soliton here. Just before, since this is like introduction, so I'll uh, talk about two uh, two types, basically two basic types of uh, optical solitons. One is this bright optical soliton. If you see the uh, expression here, it is two in two eta. Sec hyperbolic two into it x plus k into z. It is also like a traveling wave. E to the power. This is the phase part, exponential part. So if you plot this, if you just take the modulus of e, so you can ignore the phase part, and the wave is basically like your sec hyperbolic two eta into x some plus k into z. Now if you just look at the expression of the KDV wave we had shown you earlier, they are almost similar. Okay. Only difference is in the KDV, you had this uh, instead of sec hyperbolic, you had sec square hyperbolic. Okay, so there is directly one to one relationship between this optical soliton, which is obtained from the uh, as a solution of the nonlinear Schrodinger's equation, and another is the KDV soliton, which is obtained by solving the KDV equation. Right? Okay. So this, uh, I, I, we'll look at the uh, shape of this optical soliton. There is another uh, type of optical soliton, which we call the dark optical soliton, the figure you'll see. Dark optical soliton is another uh, stable structure, but in this case, in this case, uh, there is a con continuous, this is light, okay? There is a continuous background, and in the continuous background, there is a dip here. You can see in the figure here. Okay, one more thing I wanted to mention here in the equation. This is the master equation of uh, this uh, optical soliton, not only optical soliton, many other fields. Here you see some uh, parameters Z and X are used. See, this is a master equation. So uh, this is applied in various fields, not only optics, it can be applied also to describe deep sea water wave, something called deep sea water wave, right? Which will come a little later. Then it has applications in uh, atomic physics, but this structure is same, but only thing is that this variable this independent variable z and x, okay, they changes their role in different physical phenomena. For example, in optics, the role of z is basically x, okay, the space, and the role of x is just uh, t, that is time. So, in case of optical soliton that we are talking about, this this is basically t, okay, 
and this equation uh, might uh, be interested to know how the, we get this equation this equation is basically obtained from the uh, very well known maxwell's maxwell's wave equation okay so from maxwell's wave equation we, when we consider the uh, higher order susceptibility terms okay you are familiar with electrodynamics you are familiar with maxwell's equation and uh, maxwell's equation is basically a linear equation you only consider the first order susceptibility term but if you consider the highest higher order susceptibility terms the, the third order susceptibility terms then you will get the nonlinear schrodinger's equation okay you can go back and see later okay this is the basic uh, two uh, two fundamental types of this uh, uh, solid on one is called a bright solid another is called dark, dark solid bright solid is basically some elevation of intensity okay with, with respect to a, a zero zero intensity background and on the other hand your dark solid is basically some uh, deep in a continuous background okay but uh, their uh, properties are similar they are robust they interact uh, elastically okay so i have not given here the expression of a two solid on interaction of course you can derive expression of two solid on interaction that is a little complex but basically if you look at the diagram they are combination of asymptotically asymptotically means if you go away from the interaction that is at the center if you go in, away from the uh, interaction point there are basically two different solitons right so here you see when they interact at the interaction point there is some uh, summation of their uh, in, uh, intensities but as they pass each other there is no mark left on the solid one. you see just each of them but only difference that is seen that they are little shifted from their position okay so this if this is their position so i mean i think you can see my cursor here moving of the cursor so this is their position so after the interaction little shift okay the most little left side and this solid on most little right direction okay similar thing is uh, there in the solid on so as a result of the interaction okay there is nothing uh, nothing is uh, nothing no mark is uh, left out left in the solid on other than just shift in the uh, position of this position of the central position of the solid on okay so that does not uh, destroy the properties of the solid on okay so talking about solid on i there are many applications i just want to uh, tell you about one more application other than this fiber communication this solid on can also be uh, has very good uh, uh, very suitable for application in uh, other fields like we we'll see here so here this this is basically schrodinger's equation but here we have considered two fields together okay this is like uh, just bimodal we say uh, bimodal schrodinger's equation there are two coupled field one is e1 and e2 they are coupled to each other this we can just consider like two different uh, uh, optical uh, optical polarization right when you send a light we can always think of light having two different polarization perpendicular to each other so we can think of two different optical modes like two different optical uh, optical polarization directions right so if if uh, the if we just consider one such uh, equation the solution is called uh, the solution of such equation is called the vector soliton because they have two component i have not given here the expression of the vector but they are similar to this uh, scalar soliton but one very interesting and striking thing has been observed that i would like to mention here why these vector solitons are important the vector solitons are important you see here this is two components one is e1 another is e2 okay that means light is some pulse is going through two channels okay two channels means two modes okay just think of two modes not two fibers but in in a single fiber there can be several modes it's just like you send uh, several light several uh, several color at different angles okay through a fiber so simplest way of thinking that way so basically here there are two channels and two so this is an expression of two solitons in the two channel what you see after interaction after interaction you see one of the soliton just lost its amplitude or lost its intensity okay so this is one of the striking uh, striking uh, behavior seen in case of vector soliton and this has got very uh, important potential application in case of in case of uh, like uh, you can use this uh, you use this like uh, for switching devices then you, ca you can use this for uh, uh, optical computation purposes okay there are several applications in this that field um, is one of my field of work okay sure. so this is about some uh, applications and there are some uh, examples of optical solitons where you can see optical solitons so so next we just uh, go to another very uh, interesting uh, wave 
another very interesting uh, surface wave. We call it the Rav wave, or, I mean, Rav wave, not Rav wave, right? So what is Rav wave? I mean, uh, before... Sir, uh, one of the, yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, your, slide, uh, your slide mode is... Uh, please increase the slide mode. Students are not seeing this. Participant okay, are not okay, seeing. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, it, okay. Uh -huh. Let me... Okay, 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 okay. Now it is okay. I forgot to... Okay, before before I go to that, I, I think I have another uh, 10 minutes or so, no? No, sir. Uh, no, sir. And our second biggest speaker is waiting. Uh, it's uh, well, up to I, 11. I, 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 I already, I, I'm over or what? Oh, yes, sir. Over. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, I just wind up, just giving some yes, introduction thank about you, thank the raw wave. Sir. I'll just wind up and uh, I'll, I'll not uh, spend much time on the raw wave. Roy is another very interesting uh, 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 gravity wave that is seen uh, in the uh, naturally uh, normally in the sea. So you see here, there are some pictures here. You can see some uh, big waves in the sea, right? Okay. So in the sailors in the 19th century or early uh, 20th century, they had actually reported some kind of waves in the sea when they sailed. And this kind of wave, like they appear from nowhere, and suddenly they there is a big wave in front of them, and this wave make all the devastation in very small uh, period of time, and then again disappear. Okay, so the sailors at that time didn't know about this, why this happened, how this happened. So they named it as some say uh, they called it some uh, uh, giant wave, monster wave, like killer wave, right? So the uh, the, actually, the theory behind this uh, raw wave actually was studied sincerely by a mathematician for a very, very long time. But actually, it was D.H. Peregrine who had put some input on this uh, raw wave structure. And he did. He had shown that this nonlinear Schrodinger's equation, which he had already seen uh, the master equation for Solidon, right? he had seen that uh, from the nonlinear equation, we can create a structure which actually resembles a raw wave. Here, this is a structure. And he had given the solution of this equation using the nonlinear Schrodinger's equation. And this is the uh, shape of the raw wave, which is similar to the raw wave that is observed in the ocean. There is a sharp amplitude, and there is two, two dips and the two sides. Okay, And this, this is very long in comparison to other uh, from the surface of water. Okay, so this is just a mathematically generated one row waves, and it found that this this row wave, this in shape of the gravity row wave, that is wave that is seen in the uh, sea, is almost similar. Okay, here he had just given two comparison from his uh, from this. This is not from him. This is another paper which published in uh, Nature. So here are some comparison. Uh, between the shapes of the optical optical uh, wave and the wave that is seen in the uh, sea water you see the envelope side the dotted lines here and here they are similar okay and also they follow from the make same uh, mathematical equation that is non-linear Schrodinger equation of course these coefficients are different according to the medium this coefficient changes right? so they are very much similar in nature okay and there are uh, many uh, many analogy between these two systems. One is your this uh, this uh, they uh, they follow from the same mathematical equation that is nonlinear Schrodinger's equation, and uh, their process of formation of this raw wave is similar both in optics as well as in uh, your uh, ocean waves. They are formed by a process that is called the modulation instability. It means their modulation that is envelope is changing continuously. And they follow a similar statistics like uh, raw waves in sea. You do not know. I mean, in ocean you do not know when it will occur. So, but these are called some extreme events. Similarly, in optics, so this is another extreme event. So, in uh, these optics, also raw waves can be obtained in some extreme events. So, I'm just tell you about mention about what is what kind of uh, optical phenomena where you can see. Okay, so one phenomena here is this called uh, the supercontinuum generation. Supercontinuum continuum generation one of the very interesting field in optics where you see when you send an optical signal through a, some uh, special uh, way, specially designed fiber, this uh, long say the uh, laser signal, so it breaks up into its uh, frequency component. Or in other words, you can see here, a narrow pulse is there, blue color narrow pulse is there. And when it passes through the fiber, it just gets uh, decomposed into different components, so wide band component waves. Right. So this is called the uh, supercontinuum generation. So when supercontinuum generation occurs, 
that the, at that time what happens uh, in the process of supercontinuum generation many solitons and there are chances according uh, if the suitable condition is arrived there are chances that rogue wave is formed but this is a random process like in uh, sea in, in ocean in ocean wave this is a random process you do not know when this uh, which part rogue wave will appear so here also in the supercontinuum generation you do not know and which uh, part your solid on which part your rogue wave will be generated okay so there is some similarity between this ocean wave and all this so another another place where you, another uh, optical uh, device where you can see this uh, this uh, this uh, rogue wave is called the you know, i mean is the graded index wave guide i just mentioned what is graded graded index uh, wave guide you just might know already in your uh, from your graduate studies and optical fiber it can be of two types one is step index fiber means uh, your this core refractive index of the core and the refractive index of the cladding there is a sharp sharp uh, jump in the uh, refractive indices but in case of graded, graded index fiber it is gradually the from the core to uh, from the core to uh, that uh, the cladding cladding the refractive index increases gradually and there the fundamental equation to describe this uh, this waves in uh, this graded index uh, equation is fundamentally same okay only thing is that it's called the uh, uh, the non autonomous uh, non linear schrodinger equation that is another mathematical uh, non linear schrodinger equation which you, if you are interested you will see it. okay these are all the things about your uh, solid on wave and uh, raw waves that i would like to uh, place in front of you of course there are many things many interesting facts about uh, the solid on wave and about these raw waves okay these are the two uh, very important uh, things and currently uh, uh, scientists uh, mathematician scientists and of course physicists are engaged uh, in the research theoretical research as well as experimental research okay so because of their uniqueness in their property and uh, that we have seen in this uh, in this presentation that there are many analogy between this gravity waves which is obtained in this water waves and these waves in the optics so if we just uh, make any progress in one field which can uh, augment the understanding in the other field like uh, so if you study the raw waves in optics that will that can put some light on the uh, raw waves in ocean uh, it can help prediction of raw waves because uh, in ocean you, the ex doing the experiment is very difficult unlike your laboratory experiment in optics okay and both of these uh, raw waves and soliton waves they are very interesting waves and they have potential applications in a number of fields in physics and not only in physics it has application in economics social sciences in other field of uh, in many other fields okay so i would like to thank my co-workers uh, who have been working with me one is uh, dr abhijit portakur who has been awarded phd recently one is Mr. Uh, Gautam Kumar Shahoria, who is a PhD student now, and uh, Mr. Riki Dutta, who is also a PhD student working with me. And there is another Shagardip Talukdar, who is also a PhD student so working with me. Of course, their fields are a little different. Not all of them are working on the area of uh, rogue waves and solitons. And this is uh, the publication based on my uh, work. This is from 1915. We have got some publications here. So with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you all for a patient Thank hearing. So, yes. OK, let me come back. So I find how to come back, how to come back. Sir, I, I'll, I'll remove. OK, please. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, so, uh, so many things uh, you cover. Uh, many things are new yeah, actually yeah. students we never uh, in any syllabus this type of things are there in university also uh, i just heard only solitons this one this word only and nothing know about it uh, so sir one question is uh, soliton is uh, can you say any similarity between other fundamental particles uh, is it a photon phonon something like is there any uh, similarity or is it completely different things of course, similarity is there because the name of the soliton came actually solid sol sol came actually because of the solitary solitary wave that sol word has come. Ton has come basically because of its resemblance with the uh, particles which are like uh, which cannot be destroyed through a normal process. This photon, this photon, and proton, and all these cannot be destroyed through normal processes. Even though inter two protons interact with, unless it is interact with very high energy when this. 
works or monoclin. But in normal circumstance, when they interact with each other, they do not uh, they, they do not get destroyed. So because of the similarity of this nature, these uh, solitons are called this. I mean, the name soliton has been obtained, and of course oh, they have yes. some similarity, but they have not. It's not like uh, it's not like it's uh, it has got some mass because. When you talk about uh, optics, it is basically not not always it has got mass. When you talk in optics, it has got uh, so it is basically a pulse. So in in other fields, say when you talk about in some gravity wave, it has got some mass. So in different fields, it's like different. It is basically an extended object, extended. like proton and everything. Extended object means it has got some shape, like you see here. It, has, it is like some bell shaped, so it is extended, uh -huh. not at, at a single position, like not oh. like a point particle. Uh -huh. Point extended. Part. Okay, extended part. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, for time constraint, we will not uh, co con we will not proceed further. So our second speaker is waiting. Thank you, sir, for uh, uh, presentations. And I think students, all the students, will benefited with this new type of thinking, new type of things. So please go to the text and go to the websites uh, to know further. Thank you, sir. One second. Thank you. So uh, let me uh, introduce our second speaker uh, today. Uh, we have the second speaker, Dr. Anil Van Gogh. So, uh, uh, sir, uh, okay, I, I let me skin. So, uh, Dr. Anil Van Gogh. Yes, 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 sir. Sir, I just introduce yourself okay, thank you. in the, into the audience. Dr. Anil Van Gogh currently working uh, as a faculty member in Tripura University and working in the field of earth, electric environment, global lighting activity, VLF radiations, etc. So Sar wants to uh, talk with you students. Please listen and this is very useful for you also. So over to Sir. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, first of all, uh, the honorable patron of the program, CNC, uh... Sharma, Director, DHA, Government of Tripura, uh, President of this program, Dr. Bimalam Dighosh, Principal in Charge, ICV College, uh, and also the Vice President, Shri Gautam Dash, Principal IC, uh, GDC, Dharmanagar, Convener, uh, Dr. Raghunandan Dash, uh, Organization Secretary, Dr. Rahul Bhattacharya, uh, Members, uh, Dr. Roshan Ali, Dr. Sujit Ranjan Dash, Shri Arup Patari, Dr. Pijush Chandra De, uh, Ms. Rakhi Akhtar Mojundar, Ms. Chandana Tripura, Sri Anik Bhattacharji, Ms. Chonarekha Nath, Sri Torun Chandra, and my beloved students, and whomsoever is watching this uh, live webinar, uh, welcome to this lecture. And I'm, I'm really thrilled to be part of this August gathering because uh, I have been watching the um, YouTube uh, live stream uh, from the morning. And I see uh, that the program has started uh, just on time, which is very important. Uh, just dot at 11. And I have been going through the preparation of the members, uh, which is excellent. When I received a first phone call from uh, Arup Patari, sir, and then a phone call from uh, Rahul, sir, um, I immediately accepted the in invitation because mainly um, I decided and discussed that uh, instead of going into the research field, let us uh, come to some field which is uh, uh, related to our course uh, structure. And I will highlight something which is uh, relevant to this uh, uh, corona situation in which we can continue our uh, studies. So uh, the last lecture I have been uh, going through in detail. And Dr. Nondi, whatever he has uh, placed, is many things are new to me. I learned a lot. And I would request our students to really learn these new things. Uh, more carefully so that if you are interested to go into the research field, you can go. Okay. So coming down from the research topic to our main learning topic. So first, uh, I would like to share my screen. So let me see because I am uh, sharing my screen from another device. So uh, let me share my screen first. I added. This screen. Is it uh, shared? 
Yes, yes, sir. Screen is uh, shared. Uh, so everybody can see the screen. Second screen one. Second screen. Okay, okay. So if mm -hmm. I yes, want yes. to see the second screen, then I have to go mm -hmm. to the YouTube live stream, isn't it? Uh, let me see. Yes. Uh, is it uh, okay or another screen is there so i am watching the youtube live stream to see whether okay, my screen is me, shared properly okay okay, okay. I, I, it is I'm not sorry. i think yes yes I, i'm is it is it uh, that is the screen now? yeah that is the screen yeah thanks so yeah, that's my desktop, and I can see the desktop in my other device. That means I am okay to go. Uh, thank you, uh, dear students. And uh, uh, just before I uh, start my presentation, I would like to request uh, all the participants in whomsoever who has a desktop computer. Uh, if if you don't have no problem, you can study it later. But if you have a desktop, you can uh, just log on to the sites that I will going on because I'll be doing some hands-on experiment. And first, uh, I, I will go through uh, uh, just a PDF that is already available in the Ministry of Higher Education website. So I will go through the main thing, and then uh, I will do some hands-on experiments, and then I will have like to have some discussion. Okay. So my presentation is total 50 minutes, but I think within that uh, time, I'll be uh, surely able to cover the topic. And uh, this uh, presentation is not only for uh, the students, but also for my beloved colleagues and teachers. Uh, I, I would expect that after this presentation, if we can collaborate and interact with each other to uh, benefit our students, I'll be more than happy. So without wasting much time, uh, let me go to uh, the main presentation and I'm putting it in full screen mode uh, so that uh, all of you can uh, uh, look at it very carefully. So I am going to talk about uh, uh, main topic is the virtual laboratory or in short, we call as virtual labs. Okay. This is an initiative from Ministry of Human Research Development, which is Ministry of Education at present, uh, under the mission of uh, NME ICT, which is the National Mission on Education through ICT, that started long back. That means long back means when uh, around 2010-11, around 10 years back it started, and still it is continuing. But what I find the most relevant thing here is these virtual labs are going to be very useful for undergraduate students specifically when they are away from their laboratory and then uh, they can do their experiments from their home, provided our teachers also uh, learn this and they inspire themselves and then they inspire our students. So it has to come into the course curriculum. So how it can come to the course curriculum that I will discuss later, but for the time being, let us first very quickly go through a few slides that I have so that to understand what is virtual lab and how it is useful, okay? so. Uh, so basically, this lab was created by government of India, uh, keeping in mind a huge uh, demand of the engineers uh, per year from our country. Okay, but you know, uh, it is not only for engineers. It it is for educationalists who want to teach, or also for the learners. Okay, so it is. Uh, I I don't believe that it is only for engineers. Any any student or teacher who wants to get hands-on experiments with the virtual lab, they can do this. And uh, you will get the practical knowledge from the virtual lab as if uh, you are working the experiments in the actual lab. So before going to the real laboratory, it is always good to have some hands-on experience on, uh, uh, on and practical knowledge. So I should be cautious at this time because a virtual lab cannot replace a real laboratory. Okay, but the advantages is that uh, there are many advantages. But one of the advantages is that before going to a real lab, if you practice uh, the experiments in a virtual lab environment. What happens actually, you get more confidence on, on your uh, uh, laboratory awareness and how to proceed, when, what are the things that you need to do, and at your own pace. Like this video will be available to you at a much later time when I will finish my talking. So if you miss something, then you can again go and again you can study there. So that is one of the greatest things of a virtual lab that you don't have to physically present in the lab always so that you can go and acquire practical knowledge from a software environment. Then you, it is it is uh, across geographical locations. That means, say in Tripura University, say no cars uh, are running, say uh, during lockdown period, so you can't to the come to the university. But what happens actually, 
it, it breaks a barrier of a geographical location. So wherever you are, it doesn't have any geographical barrier. And it is having an equal opportunity to all. That means uh, across every student, every level of students, wherever you want, equal opportunity you will get. So with that, uh, let us go into the salient features of these laboratory structures, which is, we call as virtual lab. Okay. So this is anytime, anywhere lab. Okay. So whenever you have a computer or a smartphone or an internet connectivity, you can go to the lab and you can perform the laboratory experiment. And these are most importantly free to use. That means you don't need to give any subscription fee. You don't need to any monthly, yearly fee, nothing you have to give. You only have to have an internet connection and a device. Okay, so you don't need to invest anything. This is completely given free of cost by government of India. And it is accessible through both PC and laptop and smartphone. Uh, okay, so I have a Mac, I have Linux system, I have Windows system, I have tested that in all these systems, this works because it's mainly a virtual uh, lab and it's a browser-based system. That means you don't need to download any specific uh, software uh, for, for uh, these uh, laboratory works. Some labs uh, require flash players. Those are not uh, supported uh, uh, at present, but they are trying to upgrade this uh, uh, experiment in such a way that it doesn't need flash pair at present. But the percentages of those experiments are very small. So I don't believe that it will be a problem. I will show very quickly after I finish uh, this PDF. Okay, the, uh, the next point is that uh, developed in self-learning mode, which is one of the most important things. You see, uh, uh, in this corona period, what has happened, what I have seen that not only we have become connected through different uh, types of uh, connectivity media, but the self-learning capability of all of us has become much more, okay? Because when we are trying to teach, actually, I always say to the students that you see, there are three things in, uh, always that present within us. One is studentship, one is teachership, and one is researchship. That means we have to be student, teacher and a researcher together to give the best output. So when I am now giving a lecture, please don't consider me as an expert, okay? Just please consider me as your friend or as a facilitator, okay? So what will happen then when you consider myself as a facilitator, your approach towards the topic that I am now uh, 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 just delivering to you will be different and you will be motivated for self-learning, which is very important. Finally, whatever we acquire, knowledge we acquire within us, it has to go into a self-learning mode. If we don't go for self-learning, finally, no, no one is there who can make you learn. Okay, so one of the most important thing is to go for self-learning. So how we can do that? We can create innovative ex experimentations. And with that, actually, many institutes have come forward more than 100 virtual laboratories are now in uh, available throughout our country so that the students can get this benefit i will come to the statistics but this is the overall picture these are the salient features of this uh, virtual lab so what are these motivations basically so the physical distance uh, normally what it does because i have some say i have fever say i have some illness so i can't go to the lab isn't it if, but if there is an opportunity before going to the lab, I can perform the experiment virtually and show my teacher that this is the thing that I have done. I am confident that when you come to the actual laboratory, the real lab, the, the interaction within the lab in your confidence will become much higher. Okay, so it's very important. Then sharing of costly equipment. Nowadays, government of India is promoting sharing of costly instrument different labs because you see, in a department, say, say we have uh, X spectrometer, okay? But uh, say we have 10 spectrometers, but in the next two hours department, we have another 10 spectrometers, but those are not being used in parallel. It may so happen that there are two colleges where you have similar set of instruments, but they are not used in parallel. So resource utilization is not good in that sense. But in virtual sense, if we can share these things, what will happen? the sharing of costly equipment will become much more interesting and resource friendly. So in that sense, this is also a benefit of a virtual lab. And also the proliferation of quality lab is also another very important point because we need to penetrate. We need to penetrate to the last person who is having at least the connectivity in India so that they can have proper 
prolification uh, proliferation of the quality labs which is very important because you see if you come to university and a bigger institutes then you will have lots of facility of uh, experimentation but i know there are many colleges even in tripura uh, i know that there in the syllabus there are many experiments okay but when the students come to university we ask them how many experiments actually you have done unfortunately we see due to uh, limited resources they were not given uh, the proper light to go through those uh, experiments but those are very important for fundamental understanding of physics so in that sense if we can engage them for virtual uh, uh, experimentation with some self inspiration self study then it will be much better that was my motivation for coming to this webinar and wide circulate this uh, facility so the basic idea comes like that you have a physical lab so it has uh, it is a physical lab but through internet you can connect to that lab okay so there are various ways you can go to, uh, to a virtual lab there may be di direct connection with the physical lab or there may be a simulation based lab i am coming to it in the next slide so the basic idea is that you have to have an internet connectivity which in many places you have the internet connectivity but but i note when i take class also i also face this problem due, especially during the lockdown period that in certain areas internet connectivity is not that good but but if you go a little bit closer to the tower or some area where you have better connectivity of course you will then have uh, the connectivity and you can perform the experiment so if you have the will definitely you will have the way out okay so if you have interest automatically the things will come to you it is not that the things will come to you automatically you need to approach we need to approach and then the things will come so internet is the basic medium through which these things work so that is a must at this situation which i believe penetration is much higher compared to 10 years back in india now 4g and 5g is going to uh, come very soon uh, some experimental uh, uh, thing is there in india also so i don't believe that the internet is going to become a bar uh, for virtual lab in near future so uh, coming to the objective of this project is basically to give remote access to various disciplines in science and in engineering so being being a science student or a science teacher uh, if you just browse through the experiments i will show all the links and i will do some experiments there and you will see that it's very easy and remote access through remote access we can do uh, these things in various uh, disciplines of engineering and sciences not only physics not only physical science because i am a uh, teacher of physics but there are many other disciplines like chemistry uh, biology computer science many other disciplines are there in which we can perform these virtual experiments and to cater the students into the ug and especially pg level and as well as research scholars okay so it is not only targeted to the ug but the ug spectrum is the maximum then the pg and then the research so so here i am because this webinar is mainly targeted to the ug students so what i am trying to do is to inspire mainly ug students and teachers share who can self inspire themselves and then adopt the system to their curriculum so uh, i can help uh, them if you are interested in collaboration and then to enable the students to learn at his own pace and it arouses their own curiosity which is very important say if i give a study material and if i discuss and if the students don't go uh, go through the uh, materials out of their own curiosity then it will be difficult also for them uh, to understand and for the teacher so those days where a teacher used to go uh, to the classroom with a chalk and a duster and just write down the things one after another a student used to just uh, listen not listen actually they write down everything whatever in the board and they just go before the exam they mug it up and then vomit in the examination these are the modes those i believe that should be now slowly replaced by more interactive things software based things technology based interaction like when we are now discussing there is no bar actually so this has to be improved okay so one of the way that it can improve is through virtual lab that because in science and engineering we have to do hands on things but if you go through the government notification physically it is very difficult to come to class and when you uh, when we learn theoretical things very good over e learning or through distance learning learning laboratory related things is very difficult in distance mode but 
i find this virtual lab very interesting even after 10 decade during this corona period if you can initiate the virtual lab in each college i'll be more than happy to uh, participate because this is a government of india initiative no fees is there nothing you have to pay for this service and to provide a learning management system that includes web resources video lectures animated demonstration and self evaluation everything under one package everything under one one package okay so if we now compare the two different laboratories that are present so if you see the cost involved in a physical laboratory that always comes as a first criteria why i went to some colleges being external examiner in practical exams and i when i talk to principals and in charge and head of the departments they say that funding is one of the most important criteria from the government which is of course government if you ask government to is always not give that okay there are many constraints that is beyond the scope of this uh, discussion but fund becomes one of the foremost criteria for establishing any quality physical laboratory so in that sense what happens actually if we adopt slowly to the virtual lab scenario in this situation what will happen you will only require existing pc with some internet connection which i believe in many of the colleges you already have even the students can self learn in their home so everyone at least have a smartphone whomsoever is listening to this uh, lecture so i believe that they can immediately jump in and perform some quick experiments to do that when even i am talking okay so this is one of the greatest advantage of a virtual lab but i am again very cautious saying that if you only go through the virtual lab i don't believe this will be sufficient for your entire understanding of the topic okay because we need to go for physical experiment and then only things will become much clear because in an experiment there will be uncertainty there will be results that that is that is beyond interpretation instrumental failure environmental effects many things are there so a real experiment cannot uh, just be replaced with a virtual experiment but as i say that uh, a virtual experiment is just a platform through which you can initiate uh, the introduction to the uh, physical experiment so that the students get motivated okay and then availability of course say say in our department we have an intake capacity of 30 but in virtual environment there are many students who can come and do these things virtually isn't it nowadays in swarm nptel portal ugc has all, also said that at least 40% max uh, a, a college or university can go uh, for a theoretical um, lecture and credit transfer uh, in swarm platform so if now in future who knows that maybe more than 40% ugc may allow us to go for uh, the swarm platform but in swarm platform we are not doing any experiment what we are doing we are listening to a lecture going through the study material and appearing in an exam that is good for those subjects who don't have hardcore experiments okay but a, but a, uh, uh, just a subject like physics we just can't imagine that without real experiments a student will be able to grab the fundamentals of this theory okay so in that sense in limited time and space is basically uh, is is designed for 24 by 7 for uh, virtual lab experiments okay then limited options for innovation okay in physical lab say if you have an experiment if you want to upgrade that experiment or if you want to add new experiments this also involves funds manpower planning quotation tender processing approval and it takes lots of time at least two or three years gone and then the, when the system comes you operate and you see that some leds are not glowing like that many things are there but but in the virtual lab if you want to introduce to the students a new virtual laboratory experiment is a matter of few mouse clicks it's a matter of few mouse clicks okay and the user experience of course in the physical lab will be always with the best i will not replace the i will never even think about replacing a physical lab with a virtual lab but of course if the second best comes that will come under the purview of the virtual lab experimentation so uh, the, there are different kinds of uh, virtual lab experiments mm, let me quickly go through if the youtube stream is uh, going on correctly uh, yeah so it is correct so i don't have to ask anyone so it's correct so let me go to the full screen mode again 
fine so there are many kinds of virtual labs uh, that one can uh, design like first of kind that is the one very easy to build up is a modeling or simulation based virtual lab that means you you just uh, simulate an experiment and you don't take into any real measurement into the uh, picture okay so most of the virtual lab experiments that i am going to show here is mainly modeling and simulation based experiment okay now these are simplest but it can give us an idea a proper idea how we can proceed towards doing the main physical lab experiments okay the intermediate virtual lab experiments are basically measurement based that means we have a simulation running and at the same time from the real world some data is coming through some secured link to that particular virtual environment and you mix that virtual uh, lab with the real time data and perform the experiment okay these are called measure measurement based things these data may not come real time the data may come offline or you may collect the data offline so it is not a real time situation but you definitely have some real uh, world measurement that is coming to your virtual uh, environment and you perform the experiment which is of course a bit more uh, towards the real experiments uh, reaching the goal in the measurement based system and the most sophisticated thing is the remote triggered experiment that means it will consider the modeling and simulation part the measurement based part it will also but and remote triggered means you are actually triggering certain experiments online that means it's a real time experiments that you are doing in a virtual mode like a virtual reality system for example uh, say i give an example say in military uh, say what they do they uh, provide the uh, trainee uh, an officer with a gun that doesn't have have a bullet but it has a laser pointer so the the, uh, the trainee points that laser pointer to a screen which is a virtual screen and in that screen what is happening say there is a, a war scenario so they will now fire the gun pointing the laser and this will be a very dynamic situation and depending on how much how many correct hit you make you will be scored so this is a kind of remote trigger uh, virtual environment in which a trainee without leaving the comfort of the home and also going to the real situation of a war can score and see the performance depending on the actual environment what is going on in a war so i am giving an example like that okay you can think about a flight simulator okay so you know when we are going say from agartala to kolkata or kolkata to anywhere any sector that where we go whenever you know you know autopilot actually so when the flight takes off after a few minutes uh, the pilot just push a switch and that is autopilot and everything pilot only monitors and the plane flies actually but then before landing if required of course he will take care of and and take control of the uh, flight but if you go into ever a flight simulator you will see it's the as realistic as a real uh, cockpit that means the pilot can train himself before even just stepping over an a real aeroplane cockpit so that is a remote triggered and a real life uh, virtual lab experiment i have given two examples there are many 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 ex experiments and examples like that but i have given you two examples one in civil one is military to just inspire you how you can motivate yourself to do more experiments in virtual lab environment okay so in terms of closer to reality you you can the the most real situation that you have in a remote triggered a bit less in a measurement based system and in based less in modeling and simulation based system but in terms of scalability that means infrastructure that you need of course the modeling and simulation based is requires least least amount of uh, infrastructure and then measurement based and remote triggered based so we can start with the modeling and simulation based uh, lab, virtual lab experiments and when you become slowly expert in this field we can slowly not only learn but can develop more laboratories which can go closer to the physical reality so i have spent the most amount of time on this slide because in this single slide the whole concept of virtual lab and scalability and what is the link to the physical uh, lab is demonstrated very clearly that's why i have spent some time on this particular slide so i have that i have already covered that who are the beneficiaries of this kind of experiment uh, virtual lab experiments 
mainly college students high school students even they can come in high schools also labs are there but high school students are not able to access those labs okay so in this uh, uh, seminar if if there is anyone who is uh, interested to introduce these laboratories to the high schools you are most welcome to introduce these things in the high, high school because these are proven experiments created by experts in different high uh, quality institutes in our country so there is no such error if the, if a, if an error is there they will qui they quickly just uh, correct that error so this is these are very reliable experiments and engineering college and research institutes in different uh, institutions people can also use that those are the intended beneficiaries or users of this virtual lab so uh, these are the list of institutes who actually participated in creating the virtual lab in, in uh, experiments and you can easily see that these are all premier institutes of our country i don't have to name anyone uh, the slide is absolutely clear to you people and you can understand the people from these uh, uh, institutes under a common platform the enemy ict platform they came together and they created this very robust thing together so that the student can become the beneficiary and i i repeat again that we even 10 years back we didn't know that this corona situation is coming no one knew that actually but this situation is one of the best thing to practice this thing because we know how long this will uh, uh, take to recover so that from now if we can plan so we can enlighten our students these are the initiatives of very intelligent people and technical people so uh, these are competent people who have created this virtual lab so we can rely on this experiment so credibility is very high for this experiment so what are the different subject areas in which the virtual labs are uh, present so you see the electronics and communication engineering computer science and engineering electrical engineering mechanical engineering civil engineering chemical bio, uh, bio biochemical and biotechnology chemical sciences and last but not the least physical sciences okay so all these areas are covered categorically under the virtual lab environment okay categorically categorically we will come to that category very soon okay so this is the main website of uh, virtual lab so i will now switch over from the presentation mode to the demonstration mode and i will again come to the presentation mode there are three four slides left in the presentation after i demonstrate okay so whomsoever has computer in front of them they can straight forward go to their browser and write www.vlab v stands for virtual labs transfer laboratory vlab dot c o dot i n okay if anyone having a spare computer or uh, anything in front of them they can go in there is no mandate that you have to go right now there is no mandate you can do it later but since uh, it is the mother website so please note it down and uh, oh by the way always what you can do when you are listening in a lecture and if you are interested always have a pen and paper with you there is no substitution of a pen and paper okay whatever we do in our smartphone you know this pen and paper are always the smartest thing have been and will be so never forget to have a pen and paper in front of you so that you can note down things very quickly okay don't wait for your smartphone to boot or i don't have charge i can't access my email or etc etc okay we have to be smart so 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 to access smartphone and to access smart labs we have to be smart so if we want to become smart of course we can't throw away hard copy things that is one of the main important things so those who are listening i am just pausing this slide for a few seconds www.vlab.co.in is the mother website where we can go now and we can see what are the different things where these are available okay so now 1258 so i have time up to 110 so i think i'll be comfortably able to complete my lecture within that so let's now go to the okay so i have landed on uh, now the virtual lab website which is a ministry of education under the national mission on education through ict which is enemy ict and this is the main website and i don't want to describe this website because it should be a self learning process when you log on to the website and we should know how to navigate this website more interest and one can navigate this website within a few hours okay here also objectives and the broad areas of virtual labs are 
given and the participating institutes are also provided their logos and other things there are contact as page and many other things are there so anyone who is interested who can log into this website but particularly for our students uh, uh, what i am interested there are many labs so i am interested uh, specifically in one particular virtual lab for this uh, presentation but i am not biased to this particular lab but what i thought that i i want to introduce you to some fundamental uh, experiments uh, that is going on in college undergraduate college so i have come to the amrita vishwa uh, vidyapitham uh, lab that is the amrita university lab whose uh, website is vlab.amrita.edu so i don't know whether it is clearly visible uh, but it should be uh, if, if it is not just right vlab.amrita.edu uh, that is the amrita university virtual lab or you could, you can go to google and just type vlab amrita press enter and the first link that will come that is the desired link so in this university they are actually the partners you can see uh, if we go to the virtual lab main website you can see amrita vishwa vidyapitham is one of the premier partners official partner of this project so we directly go to their website and you see uh, different sections okay biotechnology chemical science physical science computer science mechanical and cyber security so see, since uh, we are all uh, physics uh, students here maybe most of us uh, so i prefer to go to physical sciences but without prejudice we can go to any other section okay so here if you go to uh, the physical science section we will see that there is electricity magnetism virtual lab heat and thermodynamics lab harmonic motion and wave virtual lab modern physics virtual lab laser optics virtual lab mechanics virtual lab which is a pilot project till now electric circuits virtual lab advanced mechanics virtual lab optical virtual lab solid state virtual lab and online questionnaire for nodal center i will come to this nodal center at the end of my talk but let's now go to the optical virtual lab why i have selected this optical virtual lab because uh, you see they, these are all the experiments that i think people perform in undergraduate experiment what are the experiments resolving power of a prism angle of the prism using spectrometer spectrometer i i dash curve spectrometer id curve determination of cauchy's constant spectrometer refractive index of the material of a prism spectrometer uh, dispersive power of a prism and diffraction grating which i believe all of us are familiar who has at least i think i, I don't know the exact syllabus which year uh, they perform this but at least teachers who are present will be able to really understand these experiments are handy so we can just give them the task and perform the experiments okay so before the performing of the experiments one thing that we need to do we have to log in okay so at the right side there is a uh, section called login so i will click there when i will go for login there are two windows one you can register here a create an account okay or if you have already registered you can straight forward login your through your email id and password and there are other things that you can quickly log in through google account through yahoo or facebook or amrita vishwavidyalaya they have their login so i prefer to log in through google so when i click this google you see what is happening all of my google accounts is coming into picture what i do i choose my university account and it logs in automatically because my tab is already open in university account is logged in otherwise it will ask the user id and password it is as simple as that i will not spend time on that and you see now log out has come log out has means i have logged in and my name has come on it one guho so that means i have logged in so before performing an experiment in a simulator you need to log in so let let's let's now go to say resolving power of a prism so i click that uh, link what i am landing here aim of the experiments the apparatus the principle similar to that what our teacher teach in our laboratory Uh, and similar to that where you can self learn okay principle and prism spectrometry how you are going to draw and different types of uh, things and comments are also available okay then the procedure how we will do that so controls what are the things that you will get you have to switch on the light you can you have to adjust the slit you have to focus you have to place the prism you have to rotate the telescope take the vernier reading these are the things that we need to do so the procedure is clearly written here okay 
controls that means what are the things that are available for controlling and procedure means what are the things that you will do after entering the simulation lab and then how you will actually perform the calculations and they are direct method indirect methods and the table and the procedure will vary from experiment to experiment but this is a general example that i am now giving and then the table that you can note down the values uh, from the virtual experiment and then show to your teacher that you have performed the experiment okay then the self evaluation is there that means after going through the theory and the procedure if you are interested in self evaluating whether you under whether you have understood the procedure correctly there is a quiz which i find very interesting for self evaluation then before going to the simulator we see the references that means what are the things that people have taken references from or the materials to create this virtual lab and also you have a feedback uh, section so now uh, without wasting much time let us now click this simulator okay so when i click this simulator you see some page is coming and it will uh, uh, this simulator will depend on how much internet speed you have uh, but uh, of course uh, normal broadband or uh, 3g or 4g connection it will come so uh, we can perform the experiment either from this drop down menu or we can just zoom in uh, now i have zoomed in you can see in the experiment and the first task uh, what i uh, now i can become puzzled i have forgotten what to do so i can just click this question mark at the top and see it says that change focusing of telescope slider to focus the telescope so what i will do you see i am now just moving this slider and you can see the picture of that thing now what is this this is basically a leaf a leaf that leaf is now much clear okay so i repeat it again i defocus the telescope and i see then when the leaf is clear i can clearly see it sharp then that means i have focused the telescope okay then i start the experiment if i click the start you see there are many things comes here so first thing first what we do when we go to a, a lab we switch on yeah i am online so uh, so if you switch on and switch off this light you will see that this red bars are coming then what i can do i can place a prism you see the prism has come if i remove prism the prism is gone okay so if i switch on the light you can see the cross wire if, can you see the cross wire if i switch on and switch off the light you see in the cross wire the light is coming and going okay okay so yes. if i move yes. the telescope a bit you see this this light is now at the left hand side so it has gone to the left side because i have moved the telescope so i again come the telescope at a zero position and i will see it will come so i switch off and switch on the light and you see it has again come to the middle then i can change the slit width okay and i can now place a prism and a prism has come and of course there is deviation when the light is passing through the prism so i move the telescope until and unless i see i see uh, the light again i i don't have time to perform the whole experiment but i keep on moving the telescope there is some delay but if you keep on moving the telescope you will see that the light will come in your field of view yeah so you see now the light has come in the field of view and you can take the reading of the telescope and the vernier scale at the angle readily from here and you can take out the results and note down in your notebook and this way you can take the angle of deviation okay this is how you can perform the experiment so since i don't have more time to do these experiments i don't think i don't uh, need to perform all these experiments isn't it so now you can go actually to different things 
So if I go to a different uh, physical science experiment, if I go to physical sciences and then go to say modern physics virtual lab, you see Frank Hertz experiment, photoelectric effect, Adobe refractometers, many things are there. Even heat experiments you can perform. Okay. Even heat experiments is there. Uh, where I have seen heat and thermodynamics virtual lab. So heat transfer by radiation, black body radiation, Newton's law of cooling, least disk apparatus. This is also used in undergraduate lab. So please brush through these experiments. Okay. I, I don't think I need to go through. If you are self-inspired, you can do it yourself. So since I am now at 110, but I think I started uh, a few minutes after. So I believe that the organizer will give me a few uh, minutes of more time. Rahul, sir, is it possible to yes, have yes. one or two minutes yes, more? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. You continue. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, you see, I, I don't believe that I need to go through all these experiments one by one. I don't believe that. If you are self-inspired, you can do that yourself. So, what we can do next? Self-inspiration is the stepping point, first point. But, but you know, that is not sufficient. After the self-inspiration, we need to do something. What we need to do? Let's see what we have to do. So make it a reality, at least in Tripura, at least in Tripura. Now, let's see. So let me go to the full skin mode again and go to the next slide. See what we have done, actually. So in a nutshell, we have done some on-demand lab things that whatever, whenever we need, we can access that lab. We have done some integrated learning. That means we, we, we cover the theory. We cover the procedure, we cover the experiment, and then we go to the teacher for evaluation. Okay, so this is integrated learning together. Self evaluation that means there is some squeeze also, so people can self evaluate. Of course, if you write down the things looking at others' exercise book, that is not self evaluation, that is a copy and paste. You can become satisfied by a certificate to my students, beloved students, but certificate is not the primary criteria for getting good job and getting successful in career okay so getting successful in a career you have to self motivate and you have to become skillful okay for that if you copy paste other things from practical lab what people normally do oh i will take that experiment numbers and i will show to lab okay uh, so, so to sir and you will get good marks no problem but when you are employed in a good organization they will immediately know what is the material within you whether you have understood the physics correctly take it as a game not as a burden. Our learning process should come as a game. I have come here not as a burden of giving an exam, uh, some kind of lecture as an expert. I have come here from my own as an, uh, you know, I talk to my home also. I and say that to my uh, family that, okay, I am going to this lecture to propagate that information to the students so that you have to self-motivate. So self-evaluation is one of the most important things. Then you have the animation and other things and freedom to make mistakes, okay? I know once in my lab, I took one power supply from one point to another point and I was suspended in my graduation lab for three days, only for taking for the power supply from one point to another point. But at that point, I immediately decided when I can build my own lab, my students can take the power supply from here to there anytime. Destroy the uh, thing by performing experiment, but not throwing actually. You can take the experiment anywhere. I believe my students that they don't destroy it by just throwing lab students. Okay, so in this thing, you can make mistakes without even uh, a possibility of destroying a single pin junction diode in this uh, virtual experiment. Okay, so the impact of the project that you can see all over India, more than 15 lakh students have inspired themselves. More than 6,500 faculty has been trained, including me. I have trained myself.
I need some confirmation. Yes, yes, audible. Somehow a network is problem is there, and now it's become audible. Uh, it is now audible. Okay, sorry, yes. uh, my router got hanged actually, but uh, otherwise it's a stable connection. I'm sorry for that. So, okay. Okay. okay, thanks. So this is the impact. You can see this is the impact. So I am closing my lecture soon. Sorry for the delay. So this is the impact, but unfortunately we don't see anything from Tripura. I, I don't want it to happen actually. I want that we Tripura, from Tripura, if anyone is interested, please let us do something. We can open a nodal center in collaboration with the college and the university and the department, and we can benefit our students in that way. Okay. So these are the impacts of the nodal centers across the country. And you, you, you can see that there is no nodal, nodal center in Tripura. So we can be the first uh, to uh, start a nodal center. We need only computer and internet connection. And these are some inspiring uh, things. Uh, you know, flipping a book will not make you learn, but reading it will. And just clicking through the virtual lab experiment is not sufficient, but doing it will. OK, so with that, I think I have covered almost all the things uh, together. And I would like to stop uh, the sharing of my screen and would like to hand over the mic to the organizing uh, secretary. Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you, sir. Uh, so timely explain the matter. Now every students are inside home, so they can perform some virtual experiment. Yes, they should be interested. And about the collaboration, we are ready. We don't have uh, problems uh, with the uh, with anything. So I think we can start a, something like uh, virtual labs here also. Are and another thing, so we find that uh, most of the syllabus, our syllabus, means the university syllabus, are some experiments are there, but most of the experiment of presently current syllabus are not in the virtual lab. Um, but we can continue. I think 30% 30, uh, 30 syllabus uh, covered in a virtual lab. So uh, it's very okay. useful for useful for uh, every student that at least they learn, at least they see the equipments also. Actually, suppose I, I show your, uh, you are showing the spectrometer, which is uh, this experiment also uh, for the second semester students also. This experiment uh, determination okay. of uh, determination of dispersive power prisms, so they can uh, at least going to going before the lab, they also see the instrument also, and also, it's, I think very useful. It's uh, is lab is very useful and lectures also very very uh, timely lectures, and uh, I we are worried about the student when we start the lab. And also last uh, yes. semester, last semester they are unable to uh, attend the colleges. Also, uh, we have limitation also class uh, uh, in inside lab. Many equipments are not there. So in this case, they can do the uh, do it virtually. Yes. So uh, yeah. Okay. Sir, Thank uh, you very much. And I'll be looking forward. Uh, mainly, we teacher needs to uh, self inspire us, and it will not take that much of time. And I'll be happy to mm -hmm. collaborate with any one of you. And uh, yes, we can yes. now proceed with yes. the session and. Request mm -hmm. O3, madam, to deliver a talk that I'll be also yes. very eagerly uh, waiting for to listen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, for your valuable instruction. So let us uh, go for our uh, last uh, today's last session. Uh, our speaker is uh, Dr. Atri Deshmukh, and Dr. Atri Deshmukh joined Asham University Silchar in the year 2007. Presently, Madam is working as a professor in the Department of Physics, Asham University, and her field is uh, uh, work. He, she worked in the field of high energy physics and cosmology. Currently, Madam is working in the field of atmospheric physics in collaboration with other institute, leading institute. Uh, she guided six PhD students and five MPhil students. So, Madam, please uh, join this. This virtual platform is yours. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, am I audible? Yes, audible. Madam, uh, picture is yeah, not. Yeah, before this. before uh, putting my video on, I have a question for Anirban, sir. Uh, Dr. Anirban, uh, actually, uh, like, do we have any scope to interact with the uh, virtual lab designers? I mean, if I, we are facing some issues, uh, there is no way to contact. Do you have any idea? I mean, just I wanted to know. 
डॉक्टर अनिर्बान हियर मी मैम कैन यू हियर मी या यू आर ऑडिबल yeah okay so uh, sometimes i had problems with in running some experiments because th those were not coming in my uh, computer correctly so what i did actually i contacted them directly in their institute website and there are people who will be able to help you there is an email okay, id okay. in each institute uh, that you okay. can be in touch and they will be happy to help them okay okay sure because we are some simulations are not working Uh, and uh, yes, yes. we are this, this yes. time uh, because of covid we were bound to get uh, i mean it is a nice thing actually we have learned that virtual platform i was not so much aware of before uh, using it this time so we are finding some experiments are not working properly so we wanted to discuss and we had no clue where to talk to so that is why yeah they will help there are some experiments those are not working because flash player has stopped uh, it support some of the things needed flash player but they are working on it they sent an email and that will be upgraded very uh, soon the code uh, yeah, yeah. is I going to flash player in pages. my end flash player at the user end i thought but it is not like that possibly uh yeah it's at the coding coder end actually not at the user end so they are upgrading to html5 and that will come very soon okay 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 so thank you very much thank this you. is a very thank helpful uh, information actually uh, and uh, then uh, with the permission of the moderator uh, i can start i have, I have to put yes, up my camera yes right? yes, oh. yes yes ma'am okay okay thank so you. i would like to thank the organizers uh, and also the patron of the program the director of higher education tripura for uh, encouraging them to come forward with such a program and as i understood Uh, from discussion with the convener and the organizing secretary that uh, most of the students are from bsc level uh, so i have i have ventured in a space which is an expertise area of dr anil ban actually so we are going in somebody somebody's place uh, space and trying to tell you something which uh, i think every student especially science students uh, you should yourself be aware of and also you should take the charge or you should take the initiative to educate the society as a at large of these issues because something which is affecting everybody uh, whether you are aware of it or not so you have to put your contribution as you are the lucky ones who are getting the chance of getting into the arena of higher education in india which is restricted to very small number of students so you are belonging to that rare uh, people in whole uh, i mean indian scenario who are getting a chance to get into your bsc classes so uh, given that i have chosen this topic because i think that this is something not only your studies your shudipto uh, dr shudipto has already told you about uh, some theoretical aspects of physics and dr anirban has shared with you how to do your lab now i'm trying to tell you something which uh, relates you to the society and your duty towards the society so this topic i have chosen like this i would like to speak in both the languages bengali and english uh, because i think uh, you people will be comfortable with that uh, i am with uh, in my mobile i am there in your uh, youtube also so if you write a question over there i can see it so no problem so let us start uh, we have got a training in this platform by your uh, organizing secretary uh, so let me try to use it okay uh, so rahul is it visible rahul am i audible and is it visible okay slide is visible and uh, audible also actually my okay, microphone is off my microphone is off yeah yeah it's okay it's okay okay so 
আজকে টপিকটা হচ্ছে ক্লাইমেট চেঞ্জ ক্লাইমেট চেঞ্জ এমন একটা জিনিস যেটার নাম সবাই শুনেছে সবাই কথাটা অ্যাটলিস্ট একবার হলেও শুনেছ যে ক্লাইমেট চেঞ্জ এন্ড উই শুড বি ভেরি অ্যাওয়ার অফ ক্লাইমেট চেঞ্জ উই শুড বি উই টেক উই শুড টেক সাম অ্যাকশনস ইমিডিয়েটলি টু কিপ দিস ওয়ার্ল্ড হ্যাবিটেবল ফর হিউম্যান্স সো দিজ আর সামথিং হুইচ ইউ অল মাস্ট হ্যাভ হার্ড বাট টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড এজ এ ফিজিক্স স্টুডেন্ট মোস্ট অফ ইউ আর ফিজিক্স স্টুডেন্টস আই ফিল সো you have to understand certain issues i mean when we talk about climate change what is a climate what is all about climate change as a physicist where where you can uh, contribute to understand how the climate changes and what action should be taken to negate it or rectify it so that it doesn't lead to a danger so all these things are uh, issues and uh, like in a 40 minutes lecture it will not be possible to cover everything my aim is to tell you certain things and these are popularly available things so you can pick up and read from anything anywhere you wish uh, i will put off my uh, i think i should put off my video right hmm. yeah i'm not sure so let us uh, continue here only if you have face any problem please write it in the uh, chat box of youtube so here we go uh, so yeah so the problem is as i have written as a starting line that human caused climate change so this is something very very important human caused uh, caused climate change that represents one of the great environmental challenges in our time okay so it actually why it gives challenges because it uh, poses societal and then environmental and economic issues and that we find it very difficult to handle uh, it's a result of our own activity and now we are finding to handle the result so this is the situation actually so but to understand what is climate change is all about and uh, how we uh, can not stop but uh, slow down the change changing process if you understand that basic thing you have to go through certain uh, physics basis and when you are there already in bsc classes so you have a quite uh, good understanding of heat and thermodynamics and then electromagnetic theory and mathematical physics non linear physics a little bit possibly so all these things are applied here to understand the basics of climate change so in general it is atmospheric science and meteorology and you have a very good group in tripura university who are working on different aspects of atmospheric physics we also have a small uh, i mean it's not a group even i do learn certain things and i have started doing things a very small scale but uh, this is a area which is a very uh, i should say forefront area which is directly having impact in society because when we do theoretical physics as uh, your rahul sir has already introduced me as a theoretical physicist so we do not see the immediate impact in the society maybe the results are used after a quite a uh, long time and mainly we consider it on the uh, knowledge base increase but here we see the direct impact in the society and that is why you may find it more interesting as a field of advanced study and if you feel like you can read on your own lots of material are available again i am telling in the um, open as a open source and if you want to pick up your studies even further you can go for research in this field also uh, actually it is a very uh, vibrant field and lots of work are being done so you can find so these are my main aims to make you aware of the issues and tell you that you have a responsibility towards your society so that you can go and tell people that we should act this way to survive first and then less rest can be taken care of later 
if you survive then you can do everything if you do not survive then nothing is uh, going to work right corona has taught us the this lesson very nicely and then as a subject you can pick it up if you find interest and you can go for further studies in the field okay so bef before i say anything what is a climate so in general uh, we say that weather is day to day happening day to day condition around us and this is a statistical average of uh, weather over a period of time that is what we call it climate in general we talk about uh, 30 years average but actually uh, uh, it's very naive definition actually you lots of things are involved and when we talk of climate actually many things goes into that it's a complex system because you have atmosphere you have ocean you have uh, your biosphere where living things are there they also interact with the atmosphere and ocean so it's a complex system and it's a uh, interacting system so it's not a static system that de describing the system in a physics way it is very difficult because it's a non linear and it is a very complex system so the studies are not that simple but that is how we go about it so i am just giving you certain uh, ideas and certain glimpses now this climate you if you think uh, you have uh, read about uh, i mean dinosaur you have read about uh, very warm time when it was uh, all the vol volcanic activities were going on in the world you have uh, on earth i mean so those if you think right now if you think about those things then you can tell me that madam climate is changing uh, it is it varies with time so what is the big deal why why we should uh, think about climate change because uh, change of climate is very normal thing but yeah it's normal but it's not normal also in what sense see if you go through very uh, i mean geological ages your you will see that weather has changed but this change we can really closely tie it to the greenhouse gas emission you know what are greenhouse gas emissions and you know what is greenhouse effect why uh, the earth's weather is warm you know it greenhouse effect everybody knows i guess so natural changes also make the climate change problem is with human activity as i started i told you right so human induced climate change the first thing is that when the thing takes place naturally if you go through uh, slide is not clearly visible i mean actually saying slide is not clearly visible but i am to the maximum slide beta i cannot etheke boro to ami korte parbo na amar jana nei ki kore etheke boro korte tumi chole jao onno mode and then uh, you can see okay so uh, what i am saying is that human activity is the main issue there because naturally also climate changes but the rate of change is the most important thing that we are uh, worried about and we should be aware of so we go to the next slide so climate naturally changes we are worried because the natural change pace of natural change is quite slow when we humans started intervening mainly after the industrial revolution the changes i will show you uh, certain that i mean pictures which are available in open source so you will be able to appreciate how the changes are taking place is very fast in the uh, recent years so one of the misconception is that we have a problem of earth becoming warm we don't have a problem with earth becoming warm we have a problem with the rate at which earth is becoming warm see we are living organisms and we have certain power of adaptation so if certain things are changing very slowly our system uh, not only human system uh, but other uh, living beings also they have a capacity to adjust but if you try to change too fast 
if the change is too fast then our systems are not ready to adapt to the changes and there comes the problem okay so uh, as a just uh, old examples i wanted to show you these two pictures see this ki bole eta ke bangla e bole meru bhalu so ei sada bhalu gulo ei gulo ke ei gulo boroper oporei thake boroper oporei chhanapona dey to eder jodi beche thakte hoy chhanapona dite hoy tader tader khete hobe khabar ta available thakte hobe ar je khabar ta available thakte hole oder je situation ta dorkar that is losing very very fast so result ta ki hobe after some days tader khabar jonno kichu thakbe na khabar khete na parle ma bhalu gulo chhana jonmo debe na ar chhana jonmo na dile ki hobe oi meru bhalu jinish ta extinct hoye jabe so this is threat this is what we call threat ami bhalu ke example diyechi eta manusher upore ashbe eta arekta second picture ta te dekhte pacho so ei je light line ta ache seta hocche coast line okay so dekho joto temperature bereche what happen jol ta jolostore bereche keno bereche because ice ta goleche आइस पोलार कैपे से आईस गले जलर लेवल बेड़े देखे कतटुकु डूबे गू कैन सी दैट डीप कलर इज कोस्ट लाइन एट प्रेजेंट दिस इज गल्फ अफ मेक्सिको एंड हियर यू कैन सी हाउ माच द कोस्ट लाइन हेज कम इन सैड द लैंड सो सरकम भाव जो टेम्पारेचर और बढ़ते थे कि कोस्ट एरिया ते जरा थे ये पुरोपुर डूबे जाए इट उल नट हेबिटेबल ओके हाँ गुड मर्निंग गुड इविनिंग लिखते हैं इफ यू हाव अ कोश्चन प्लिज रईट इन द चैट बक्स डोट रईट गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इविनिंग दिस इज नट ए वे अफ रेसपन्डिंग इन दैट ओके नाउ एस आई अलरेडी टोल यू दैट ह्यूमैन सीविलइेशन और नैचरल इको सिसटेम एज ए होल आवर एनवायरमेंटल things whatever is there whatever different components are there they are adapted to the current scenario we are used to our uh, agriculture our way of living our way of uh, uh, handling things uh, everything depends upon the climate where we are adjusted to so if we are not adjusted to a system and that is imposed upon us we will not be able to handle so this if we have a rapid departure rapid departure from the situation that we are in suppose if i uh, suddenly send you to antarctica you will be finding it very difficult to adjust why because your body is used to a tropical climate and suddenly i send you to a polar climate it will be very difficult for you to adjust that is a rapid na i put you into flight and i send you there so it's a rapid change so it will be very difficult for you to adjust and that is how if the climate around us changes very rapidly it will be very difficult for any living not only human being but other uh, flora and fauna both for them it will be dangerous to survive and then you will run short of food also okay so uh, i wanted to tell you something but uh, okay since the time is less i am not going to youtube uh, links but uh, when you will see it in the youtube later you can use those links to see the different components of the climate system uh, you can see okay so now this is the structure of our atmosphere you can see uh, so as you go up it's uh, altitude versus pressure so as you go up the pressure goes down and this is how i mean with altitude pressure changes and you can see that uh, up to 30 40 km pressure is almost zero so you uh, some reference heights are there like where the boeing flies or you have a mount everest here so this is uh, how cloud system forms and you have uh, if you have interest do you mean no you cannot uh, uh, this is tamanna Tamanna Shen, she is asking that humans or other animals don't have the capacity to adapt ourselves quickly. No, we cannot. We cannot quickly adapt. 
we need some time to adapt so this much time if it is not given if our uh, activity is so uh, i mean radically changing things it will be very difficult for us to survive i'll see, tell you what the effects are coming in so this is the key layers of the atmosphere and uh, you can see how the solar uh, radiation comes in and how the solar uh, earth keeps the heat inside and because of greenhouse effect and how it warms up so these things i am not going into details i thought i will discuss but uh, i have seen the time limits uh, i don't want to keep you sitting here hungry because you have to go and have your lunch also it is important so let us go so how 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 do i know that what happened in the past how do we know so you can reconstruct your past climate so you have ways to reconstruct here you can see this uh, method everybody knows right so you, in a mature tree you can see the tree, tree rings so if you see the tree rings from that you can calculate and you can see the uh, i'm not going in details but from the distribution of rings their distance their number density you can find out what, a, what what was the climate whether it was a drought or it was wet or what or what not so there are many ways of looking at it you can look at the corals coral reef you can check it or you can uh, see that in the ice cap you can have a trapped air of very past and then you can uh, study those things so there are many ways of reconstructing your past climate and because when i say that climate is changing you will pose the question that how do i know it how it was in the past okay so that is there are ways of reconstructing your past climate now so by that what i try to tell you that climate change is nothing but a altered pattern in the climate so one of the main measures is through temperature and this is what we discuss most in the uh, literature or uh, in general we discuss most uh, if there is a little change why we discuss about temperature because very little change in temperature can make drastic changes on those patterns of uh, rainfall temperature many things ice cap blah 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 so this temperature we take as an indicator of climate change because it gives us how much disaster can come if there is a temperature change even by a 0.5 degree okay so we go so as i told you the natural uh, this is uh, what i have borrowed this slide from somebody else so natural climate change it takes a very long time see this is an axial precession of earth and this is the way how the obliquity of earth changes you can see the cycles this is what is important see it is 41000 years it takes for obliquity or the tilt of the earth about its uh, own axis to change this axial precession which oobling of this our uh, lattu that is 26 year, thousand years cycle and this orbit, elliptic orbit around the sun, its shape changes in lakhs years turn. Now, what will change we are talking? It is not even 100 to 200 years. So that is the problem. Okay. So we, just to tell you how the things are changing. In the x-axis, you can see the years. And in the two sides, you can see two things. One is global temperature, one is carbon dioxide concentration. Carbon dioxide, we have plotted because it is a major greenhouse gas. Uh, so it will, tell, it will tell you if it is increasing in the atmosphere, then the temperature automatically will increase. It's not a very one-to-one -one relation because other factors are also coming in. But uh, this is how you can see the whole picture. So somebody is asking, Orbitanath, what is the best reason for immediate change of climate? We are talking about that temperature, okay? So uh, 
this is how with year you can see in the last 200 years not even 200 years 200 uh, 180 years 120 years rather you can see how the things are changing what was the temperature see what is the change 1.5 degree a little more but that disaster you will see how it is changing so parts per million carbon dioxide uh, concentration unit uh, you can see the temperature is in degree fahrenheit now you can see that this is a plot of annual mean temperature and five years mean temperature you see now covid now so you know how the things are being uh, plotted so you can see the last part you can see from 2000 uh, 1919 just around 2000 you see how the temperature is going up and up and up okay so over uh, till 1980s the change was not that rapid from 1980s, you can see it is almost a straight up. So that is the problem. Orpita, you can uh, try to understand that is a problem which is causing uh, us worry. So this is a, a temperature. Uh, this is not only a land surface temperature. I have uh, taken a plot where human induced changes. This is given by the uh, yellow color line and natural changes are there and you can see the average effect so from that you can appreciate what is the change that has been induced by human uh, i have a better figure to tell that okay so the rate at which we are going uh, this i have this slide also is borrowed for somebody else this is a plot that if we go on emitting greenhouse gases in the uh, atmosphere in the current rate then where we will reach by 21 so by 2100 there will be a change in temperature by almost 8 degrees so if we can cut our emission we can restrict we can restrict we cannot go back we cannot go back it is not possible but we can slow the change slow down the change so that the effect is not drastic again i am telling our aim is to reduce the rate if you reduce the rate we can adapt change will be there you cannot stop it but the rate of change should not be enhanced we humans what we are doing we are interfering with the climate uh, system as a whole we are a part of climate system but our activity is causing the climate to change in a very fast rate of which to which we cannot actually adapt the problem is that so we have to reduce the rate of progression so that we can adjust to the change and survive okay so uh, what are the indicators that the warm uh, i mean world is warming so we are seeing the sea level there are these 10 indicators so near surface air temperature is going up water vapor content in the atmosphere is going up temperature over ocean is going up sea surface temperature is going up sea level is going up but the sea ice content is going down so in uh, in one of the tv shows uh, you see lots of things like uh, amazon netflix what 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 not there is a show called our planet if you have time you can go and see it there i'm just uh, not uh, doing a publicity for somebody some program but uh, the point is that you have to see things to be able to appreciate it and once you appreciate it then and only then you can go and tell others you do not tell others of which you are not convinced so if you are convinced that you are in a danger then you will go and tell other people or make them aware of the danger and once we uh, maybe very little you can take your part you can go to schools you can go to uh, primary schools around you 
and you can uh, talk to the teachers and you can talk to the students because they will have now it is a online thing okay uh, till covid period you cannot physically go possibly but you can talk to your uh, people in your house you can talk to people in your uh, around you or you can have many ways to communicate to people that we have if this is a time we have to be alert and if we do not act immediately we will be in danger okay so but someone there may be another question because i have heard this question from someone else that whether sun is the cause of our uh, increasing temperature because uh, we relate our warmth we relate our heat with sun right so can solar activity a cause of uh, this recent increase in uh, temperature in the atmosphere uh, earth's atmosphere but you can see this figure this is giving you uh, solar activity this yellow line and the red line gives you the temperature at earth so you can obviously see that it's not uh, correlated positively rather it is negatively correlated so, so solar activity of late has gone down but our temperature in earth is increasing okay You can see also the greenhouse uh, gas concentration. Concentration. Uh, you can. Uh, I have plotted in two this methane and carbon dioxide. They are the two major things. So you can see in time, and you can see what is happening in the last panel. If you see in the last panel, you can see a rise which is almost taking up. You can see the rest of the figure is almost horizontal. But of late, when you look at it, you can see that it is just going vertically up. So can you see the rate of change? And that rate of change is what, what is owing us. So fossil fuel burning, uh, use of uh, different uh, chemicals, which uh, releases these things in the uh, atmosphere. Like methane is also released from the Pedi field, do you know? Methane is released from the pedi field, and in Western uh, country, certain uh, sorry, uh, certain countries are there who, in general, are uh, mainly meat eaters, right? So they are using the grass field as a grazing ground to raise their livestock, right? But that way, if you directly eat the pedi, the amount of methane you will generate. And if you uh, go on eating the meat for which you require the pedi field, you can just scale it how much more we will be needing. And these are releasing methane in the atmosphere. I'm not uh, requesting everybody to be a vegetarian. But if you are uh, meat eaters in the sense that red meat, then you require really you require grazing field and they are also sources of methane because only one is there uh, in the audience uh, i guess so he can throw more light after i stop speaking so let us go so these greenhouse gases actually have problem because they have a lifetime if you release them in the atmosphere they will be there you can see for how many years so methane though it is dangerous but it stays only for 10 years so after 10 years, the effect will be gone. Today, if you release something, after 10 years, you will not see the effect. But if it is carbon dioxide, it goes more than 1,000 years. So we have to make a judicious choice because we cannot go back to the cave time, right? We cannot be going back uh, 1,000 years back as we were. We will live that lifestyle. That is not possible. So we will have to judiciously change our lifestyle adjust it so that we release there will be release again i'm saying we cannot stop it but we cannot we can slow it down we can do less whenever it is not required you should because nowadays we buy things or we choose a lifestyle depending upon the advertisement that is seen in either in internet or in tv it was in tv nowadays it is internet so lots of advertisement lots of things are being shown to us uh, we have become consumer based uh, society that way why where we are leading to as a 
educated person as a person as i am saying you are a basic student so you are really a educated one so it is our duty to choose what am i doing why why i am choosing that this thing why i am not choosing this am i adding to the waste am i what is my carbon footprint those are the questions you have to ask you have to be able to ask do not generate waste i was visiting japan for some reason sometime back and uh, do you believe uh, we, you will not believe actually that i was being charged by the amount of water that i am wasting that is going out my house if i consume the water no problem i mean there is a charge for that but if i am wasting water they are charging me more just to tell you that do not waste water this is a resource which is drying up very fast in our side i mean the tripura or asha we do not understand that because we have in general lots of water supply you go to a hill place you just go to mizoram go to aizal it's horrible for a bucket of water people have to really struggle you do not have to go far you just go to aizal you can appreciate so do not waste our resources if we really use our resources in a thoughtful manner we can really control we can control ourselves and the situation can be far better okay so you can see you can see the changes just to showing this just to make you appreciate that how the changes are taking place very fast of late so you can see almost flat throughout the ages from 1800 and now in the recent past you can see how fast we are going how fast we are changing so if we are in that phase where we will land you can understand okay so you can uh, yourself if, if you can think about it if you have ever thought about it i do not know uh, even you are now around 18 years uh, 20 years old so if you compare to your childhood memory maybe of uh, Six and seven years old or ten years old, we can really relate to this. That night temperature used to be quite down, and day temperature used to be high, so that there was a balance. But if you have, if you look at the data, you can see that of late we are having warmer nights. So that is what is the problem? You will ask. Problem is that that disturbs your sleep. that disturbs the whole uh, production of crop flower everything gets disturbed by this if you do not have the temperature right temperature at night hours day hours balance then things are getting highly disturbed and it is taking a toll on many many things okay so now scientific community agrees that human caused climate change is there and it is we who are responsible for we are really moving towards a catastrophe and if we cannot control ourselves we will be blamed even there will be no one to blame us also because human race will not survive in this earth it is not important uh, for art to make us survive right so dinosaurs do not exist anymore so we will we will have that fate very soon the way we are heading yeah so i will i, I will wind up so this is uh, you can see that uh, picture uh, where you have uh, this green is only natural factors and this black is our observation and if you i mean this is model so we are creating models that if there are natural factors only how it should change and if natural and human how model is telling that green band uh, sorry the blue band and the observation is telling that black one so it is very clean and clear that it is we the human beings are responsible for this change and we should be able to pay for it so we should restrict our lifestyle we should have consciousness to do our part every individual has his or her own part to contribute here so even if it is a very small decrease from my side that will have a good impact and i request you all to be careful 
to study a little bit more about this i had almost half of the thing is left i could not discuss because uh, time is up and i do not want to linger this is certain uh, topic it requires quite a lot of discussion but i hope that you will appreciate that something is going on wrong and we should be aware of it and we should do our own part to revert it try to revert it if you try to revert it then you will be able to bring it back to some situation right if the i mean nodita jodi erokom boye jacche tumi erokom satar karte chesta koro tumi ekhane na jao okhane giye pouchobe right kintu kichu na kore boshe thako to tumi kothay giye pouchobe so seta hocche byapar to ami asha kori je tumra bujhte perecho ami ki bolte cheyechi so tomader jodi kono question ache please put it in the youtube chat box so that i can answer and uh, onivan is here dr onivan is an expert in this field mm, let me check madam uh, is there uh, let me uh, okay uh, yeah i am had... watching the uh, uh, no, thing. Request... very careful rahul sir yes yes madam yeah we can yes, request only, dr onivan to comment to uh, add a comment because uh, youtube comments are coming slowly i am seeing them if i have something i will i will uh, reply to that directly okay uh youtube uh, no comment acha uh, madam i have some certain question uh, is yes, there any yes. local data local data available means i say climate change is there any uh, related to climate change and local data because we don't know in tripura also we find that a lot of uh, change in the crop culture crop culture means uh, previously it was uh, um, hilly area it was uh, as usual uh, vegetation but nowadays people are Uh, planted a lot of um, uh, rubber wood rubber tree uh, so uh, tree uh, full of rubber means uh, rubber tree so i oh, just i'm uh, just i'm thinking is there any change in the climate uh, is or any data available in uh, change see, of- uh, there, there is something you can go through uh, i'm i'm showing you there is something you can go through you can read this report rahul is it visible uh okay i'm uh, adding yes, it is yes. you can download it it is available Ass- assessment of climate change over the indian regions yes yeah so uh, whatever indian study latest study they are incorporating here you you can have a read any any student as a matter of fact can have a read that is not a problem it is a public document and everybody should read i think yes this yeah i wanted to tell them lots of things because time is constrained we could not but i hope that they will pick up and read at least something in a general uh, knowledge basis uh, that is very very important and uh, this you were talking about rubber plantation uh, mm. we were encouraged to do rubber plantation from economic point of view uh, yes. our problem is that most of the times we do not uh, think about the impact climate wise impact so it is degrading our soil so far i know i think uh, dr onivan can tell you better but uh, this is degrading our soil we have to protect our soil we have to protect our air quality we have to protect our water if we cannot do all those things then we are really heading towards a disaster that is the main thing Yeah, so uh, Omlan Devnath, from where I can read, uh, I have given you uh, this thing, or you can just go and type climate change. Lots of things will be available in internet. No problem. You can re- get your uh, material from there also. Should not have a problem. So, Dr. Rahul. Ah uh, yes, madam. Uh, no, uh, uh, chat box people are a uh, little bit of uh, shying to ask. Actually, uh, you can uh, if you want, you can ask in Bengali also. Huh? If you anyone yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. Just go to Bangla. Bangla is English. Ah, Bangla is English. Book page where I can English. I said. That's why I said in Bangla. I said in English. I said in English. Ah, chat box. Ah, in Bangla. Bangla is written. Shall I? Ah, chat box. Ah, Bangla is written. No, no, no. छड़ाओ से 
I say something. Is it Shruti? Uh, uh, wait, uh, madam. Uh, let me add Shrujit also. Yeah, please. Uh, Shrujit uh, and also Rogu. Rogu is there, so I'm adding Rogu also. So all of the uh, those who are organizers the, are here almost. Oh, uh, almost yeah. organizer and also. Uh, I mean, this looking Shudita, uh, Shudita uh, is not. Yeah, I would like you, to request Dr. Anirban to add actually something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sir. I am here, madam. I am just hearing. So, uh, very interesting talk. Uh, thank you, madam. Basically, what I would like to add to that rubber plantation thing that things have become much interdisciplinary now. And uh, all of us know that climate change is such an interdisciplinary subject. So before a policy level decision, the government has to exactly understand what is the reason and what is the cause and effect actually. But uh, in a stochastic atmospheric system, cause and effect thing is very difficult to very segregate. Difficult to, so very, what, difficult to. very difficult to segregate. So I would not say directly that the rubber plant uh, is going to hamper everything. But you see, you say now uh, the society is becoming a kind of profit driven society that preserve preservation so once i talk to oil people actually what they say that okay climate change is there but the oil consumption will go and go and every market will be driven by finally by the oil consumption because uh, the economy multidisciplinary research all these things are so tied up together so picking up one variable and try to understand its effect on the final output is difficult but, but but yes, at the policy level, degrading the soil, degrading the soil. Just yes. I say. Yeah, yeah, that is possible. But at the same time, some other people may say, uh, come up with many things that say, okay, it uh, raises the uh, fertility of the soil or like that. So there is a highly. What I mean to say is not that it is not uh, degrading the soil quality, but what I mean to say, we need more multidisciplinary people to come onto the mainstream research. So the students who are listening to this discussion should get inspired uh, uh, to get into the mainstream research to how much one person needs to know at the multidisciplinary level to so that they can give proper solution at the policy level. So uh, a webinar or this kind of thing should inspire the students so that they can come to the multidisciplinary research field and then we can go ahead. So climate change is such a very important subject and Otsi Madam has definitely uh, given us uh, some inspirational things. So I'm very glad to be a part of this uh, webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Uh, Anirban. A few, yes. few questions yes. are there from the participant sides. Yes, please. Please, please, please refer those questions to the madam. Plastic so, bag. Omlan, Omlan oh, Debla, plastic. Madam, plastic what is bag. the best way to reverse from it? I have Omlan already answered Debla, it. Rogu, I have already answered those questions. I have taken up all those okay, questions. Okay. So I am okay, taking okay, up okay. questions. Uh, you need not tell me the questions. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, actually, plastic bags have been more than toxic and they have been banned. But owing to such good, usable, handy things, polythene bags, do you really ready to replace? That is the problem now. We, we, I said that you cannot uh, go back to the old age but you have to really give up some of the things you have to really judicially use things so that you do not contribute certain things are uh, as dr oniban has already said and i also said that it is a complex system it is very difficult to uh, estimate what is happening due to it is not a direct cause and effect thing so it is very difficult to understand what is causing what but you can see that plastic, as you somebody is saying, that plastic bags are really damaging. Their effects uh, on different uh, things, we can see that it is directly see, seen that it is damaging. But you should be everyone, if we decide that we will not use, yeah, things are handy, but at the cost of what? That is what you are supposed to ask, the question. That is the whole, whole uh, my aim of whole lecture is that, that you should be able to understand that beyond our day-to-day -day comfort, there is certain things which will extinct, which may extinct the human race from the earth. That is why I have chosen this topic to talk to you. Madam, thank you, madam, for a beautiful presentation. You award the people 
uh, how to come up from this burning problem and this is a burning issue so madam one uh, question or rather uh, say uh, some conditions uh, is there so in the graph what you have shown then around 1910 the temperature has come very below point suppose if so it you is see the temperature what i wanted so to what tell are the is possible that causes it is going up no madam you see uh, in, in the graph in 1900 the temperature is little higher then in 1910 the temperature has come much below to that okay and right from 1920 temperature has come up and from 1980 to, uh, to uh, 2000 temperature has gone very sharply up so what is the possible causes why actually temperature uh, had come down around 1910 what are the possible causes of uh, that dr rogu if you uh, the point the, exactly why it came down at that point of time you can see that it is it is a stochastic process as uh, dr onirban has already told you many factors were affecting many things but that was oscillating yes. around the level you can see that the temperature oscillation was going around the level there was not sharp rise what we are concentrating is that of late sharp rise. That is the problem. The rate of change is our problem. Change is not the problem. And another thing is that, madam, that who are the actually Shizito real contributors of the pollution? Dr. Shizito yeah. wants to ask something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Finish, yeah. It, finish it. Please, yeah. you finish, then I'll ask. I have a question for yeah. both uh, Dr. Nirvan Go as well as uh, the Professor Atri. So after you finish, I'll, uh, I'll just ask. No, okay, we'll just yeah. Actually, I would like to say, actually, who are the actually contributor of the pollution, say, uh, in developed countries and in the underdeveloped countries. If you do see in the developed countries, each and every person are having the personal Politics person. is the root Even cause of our all damage. So it is not necessary. Politics is the but root cause of our But in the underdeveloped countries, we are, share, we are sharing the cars and other things. And they are contributing much. Yeah. So, actually... So how do we actually uh, democratically solve this kind of problem? See, I'm, I'm and that is why I see not a politician. Uh, I am a physicist, not a politician, not interested in politics even. For me, well, I am politician, whether it is this much or that much, it is contribution. So if you contribute yeah, no, 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 no. to something, you should try to reward back. Everyone, if you are contributing that much, you reward that much. If you contribute this much, you reward. But it doesn't mean that he is contributing that much. So why should not? somebody is doing that much of churi uh, That cannot be a logic. Churi is churi. And whether you do this much, this much is a churi. So you should not do it. So the way I, we cannot go back. That is also true. Certain things in lifestyle that we have already, we are so much used to that you cannot think of going back. But you can judiciously use them. Online packet just to order for it. packet gula ki karo. Online leke order kore ana the lagi kena. Dukane pawa jana ashe pashe. Ita hotse mindset and it's our problem. It is our. I'm not uh, talking of any platform, but online order kore the jinish ana ano jinish. Tar yetto gula packaging gula ke karo ki. That's what just adding to the pollution, right? Have you ever thought of it? Well, that I am telling. Actually, some people are knowingly uh, polluting the environment, and some that people is, are ignorantly uh, polluting the environment. At least ignorant okay. people will be there. Our children are ignorant people will be there. At least, but they will be there. আমি যেটা বলতে চাচ্ছি যেটা হচ্ছে যারা এওয়ার যারা শিক্ষিত তারা জানে তারাই আনজুটিশিয়াসতে কাজগুলি করছে যারা অশিক্ষিত তারা এরকম আনজুটিশিয়াসতে কাজ করছে না যত করাপশন সব বড় বড় করাপশনের সাথে যারা ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল তারাই জড়িত দেন হাউ ক্যান উই চেঞ্জ দা সোসাইটি যারা কমান্ডিং পজিশনে তারাই করাপশন আমরা আমরা ডিগ্রিধারী তো আমরা এডুকেটেড নই আমরা ডিগ্রিধারী যেটা আমাদের ডিফারেন্স আছে Yes, uh, yeah. yeah, actually, my question uh, is both to uh, Dr. Nivan Guha uh, from his lecture, and also uh, then I'll come to uh, three uh, points. Uh, to Onirban, uh, it, it was uh, first of all, it was a very nice, uh, informative, and a very uh, good delivery of your uh, mm -hmm. lecture. And what I Thank want you to very know much. is 
yeah thank you. welcome and what i want to know about this uh, is the virtual lab suppose uh, as already pointed out by rahul that many of the experiments that is enlisted in our uh, undergraduate or postgraduate syllabus are not available so actually we yeah. want them also to be a part of this virtual lab so how to take this initiative number one and number two and yes. you have mentioned about some you have mentioned about some uh, some nodal points actually there are many nodal points in uh, in uh, northeast part of northeastern part of india also and uh, what actually yes. is the function of these nodal points i mean do they do they develop something or i mean they just uh, just they just uh, disseminate the knowledge how to use this uh, lab okay so i mean just can you okay. shed some light on these two points yeah so you have two questions the first question is then what to do when we don't have sufficient experiments or the experience that we see in the virtual lab that we want to perform so that to tackle that the thing is that it based on uh, the syllabus of many uh, institutes what they do in their lab and it's, it was started mainly driven by engineering uh, streams okay so you will see that many of the virtual lab experiments are engineering uh, teacher and engineering student driven instead of physics but of course in engineering we teach physics and that's why they take care of that but there are many physics and core uh, experiments those are missing so i discussed with omrita lab people if, uh, uh, and they said that it based on demand and if more people come into uh, saying that okay we need uh, this kind of experiments that we uh, create the demand from student side and the teacher side and definitely they will design because it takes lots of resources funding manpower for doing that so yes that is one of the way of doing that and it is linked to your second question is the nodal center is not there to develop anything nodal center is something like if you go to the v lab website there is a format in pdf form so the university or the college authority has to appoint a person and say that i have this uh, amount of computers and internet facilities available and i am ready to give the students this facility so it is only uh, like uh, giving the facility with a recognized nodal center uh, through a university or college it is nothing to do with the development initially but but when we have a nodal center at that time what we can do we can engage the teachers and the technicians in our laboratory to come into that nodal center and propose to the v lab uh, simulator that they, we want to develop this experiment that they will give us the required tool to develop those things so this is step by step that we can engage ourselves in this uh, initiative actually so i think okay, that I mean, uh, summarizes uh, I mean, uh, the answer of your two questions so i mean rather than writing you individually uh, to amrita point you go to a nodal center and uh, just uh, create a, a demand uh, so many people then you yes then yes yes, yes. Then that should be you. that okay. should be much better i think the penetration will be much better okay okay and, and then i come to that uh, with that climate change and uh, of course um, i can speak in bengali because climate change i think is so i mean uh, so i mean uh, uh, like uh, attached to human life i mean this anything you want to do you should do at uh, this uh, this uh, at this local level i mean the, I, 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 this is my understanding okay so i wanted to uh, just come to that point i mean as 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 i uh, uh, just uh, the convener of the meeting i just forgot the name anyway i know you i know you <laughs> later on you pointed out there is there are some some deep of temperature at, at 1900 that i understand there is a constant fluctuation over 10 20 years there might be some deep and some go on and from uh, since that uh, 1900 uh, 1910 or 20 there is a sharp rise of uh, this temperature and is i mean my question is is that due to this uh, some rapid inter industrialization in say some developing countries uh, along with some uh, some massive population rise i mean uh, what is the reason of this I mean, is it like two two options i have said is it because of the massive population rise because rise of population in some way is responsible to increase the temperature because of their they are increase some kind of any any human is increasing some kind of temperature always because of his activities and body temperature she's always increasing temperature so i'm breathing seeing everything another point i want to know or whether it is is it because of the massive industrialization during this period i mean okay yeah, i mean you can, you can you can have some control the activities of human like you not not using plastics and not using uh, all these things you not use, i mean um, like uh, don't do, i mean not wastage of water okay that kind of activities 
to some extent can uh, reduce this temperature can they make appreciable change or uh, the, i mean there is some factors which cannot i mean i mean my question is or there are some factors which we cannot directly regulate like this population increase one of them another thing is like uh, sometimes people, nowadays people are uh, calling it as a, a sustainable development i don't know how much uh, practical that sustainable development idea is but when you when you talk about the development of a uh, say the developing country of course he doesn't have this all this know-how but it still wants to develop so there you cannot talk about the sustainable development my personal feeling is about the sustainable development this is more equipped to this western world rather than is rather rather than that is equipped to the third world countries like us okay my question is clear the two points i wanted to make or it, yeah. it is become <laughs> cumbersome no, no. it is as as dr anirban has already told that it is a uh, like multi i mean it's a, such a huge field is it such a huge uh, i mean in t uh, all the many components are there which you cannot really uh, i mean handle or you cannot really say that because of this this much has happened but obviously going to your first question obviously industrial revolution after that only you see that peak so you had a large scale production of things a uh, large scale uh, as you say that population increases consumption and, is more yeah yeah consumption, more consumption increases is more consumption more production countries obviously number of uh, i mean population is high so obviously those things uh, are more so those many things are there which you really directly we cannot say that cut this this will happen but some models as i showed already in the uh, some of the slides that if you cut your emission but now cut emission means emission is coming from many sources so all the sources you cannot cut so what one you question. can cut yeah one that more question the, 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 uh, yeah sure please yeah this uh, this uh, climate change uh, what what should i call is uh, say climate change movement has started i mean almost say 15 to 20 years back right or even even uh, earlier to that so do you have any data so that as say after controlling all this be human behavior which is one of one of the factors to increase the temperature nothing do you have controlled. data like nothing was controlled since then but the model i showed that human plus natural when you add model wise that is giving you the observation that tells you that you have a contribution matlab we have a contribution human race has a contribution so that contribution you cannot go back to pre industrial era right you cannot go back to that lifestyle that is not possible for any one of us as a matter of fact but we now have to judiciously cut you cannot cut everything and obviously the politics is coming in right uh, third world countries and then advanced country, developed countries why they have already uh, done so much of damage and now they are asking us to uh, control why it should be like that but ultimately if the human race is extinct it will not be third world country or developed country right everything will go no no I, i'm not saying that i'm just wanted to point in pointed out that what is the ex, what is what what is the actual cursor that i mean that you have to identify that we should identify which is actually that, that responsible has been, that for, has been identified so far i understand controllable or not yeah yeah that uh, so far no, this, this, this is this is, is the greenhouse process. gas greenhouse yeah. gas is the main problem okay greenhouse gas is the main problem one of the reason is population this uh, high high consumption so the question was whether you can control that really yeah that is what na that is the problem that is why so many measures are taking and uh, uh, you have to really do it in a large scale so the multinationals the big companies they have to cut whether they are ready to cut or not these are all these are policy matters as uh, dr anirban has already said but we can do our little part that i am saying they are not doing so i will not why should i do it why should i uh, sacrifice this should not be the attitude that is what i am trying to say whatever i have let me preserve it let it okay. be uh, one drop mane bindu the sindhu the bindu hi ho but when bindu is important okay thank, thank you very much rahul sir can we stop uh, yes uh, last uh, okay, lastly yes, yes, can yes. we generate local level data it is mane for climate change anirban 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 sir will tell anirban sir anirban sir yeah yeah can you, sure can you create local level data some sorts of data that uh, 
uh, that uh, will give us idea something uh, there is change in the climate or something factor so, uh, not the temperature then uh, then other anything other that you can measure in local level means uh, uh, local level means uh, south tipura can you do some collect people data do have local level measurements that go into different models and assimilation yeah. to create this climate yeah. model so we have local data actual any data collection is a local data collection so we have data even from south tripura oh, oh south tripura no i'm just uh, just wonder yeah. that the data is available but, but one thing in analysis. atmosphere is that atmosphere mm -hmm. is highly stochastic system and non linear system i don't yes. want to go into technical discussion at this point because i hear some points coming from too much non technical uh, point of view i don't want to go into technical at this point when everyone is hungry we can <laughs> discuss no, it no, later no, this is not a technical <laughs> platform also <laughs> I mean, the students are there, and the baby was. But the thing is, just... people have data at the local level that go to uh, the climate change model. Say, if we have a station in uh, Mount Everest, and we also have a station in South Pole, those are actually local measurements. So we do have local measurements, but those individual measurements may not tell us what is going to happen at that point because atmosphere is a highly non-linear stochastic system. And what happens actually? It is a multi-variable system. So you just—it's yes. an open thermodynamic multi-variable system. So you just open. can't take a condensed matter physics or nano physics experiment so that you can control other parameters and take the variation of another parameter with respect to the temperature only. First point. And just before ending, I would like to pass on my comment on that climate change is a different thing than global warming and only temperature. So when Madam talked about climate change. Temperature is one of the factors. There yeah, are many factors. This is one of the factors. This is one now, coming to the 1910-20, those, those deep that we are looking at, there are many reasons. I can say volcanic eruption may be a reason, nuclear waste may be a reason, aerosols are reasons, and most importantly, ocean circulation and heat intake and interaction of the atmosphere with the ocean is also a very important thing. So if you simply look at the greenhouse level gas emission from the industrial age, it is monotonically increasing. But if you look at the global warming, you, you don't see that monotonic increase. You see a dip and then increase. Then even in 2000, uh, 1998 to 2012, we had a flattening in global temperature. No one could explain it. And there are papers in Science and Nature which explains in terms of ocean heat take because ocean heat capacity is much higher. It, it, it's its specific heat, its water is very high. So even if it changes half a degree centigrade, it is creating much more effect on the atmosphere. So ocean circulation also plays a major role. And if people are interested in Northeast India and Tripura specifically, it is highly dependent on many, many ocean circulation like ENSO, Indian Ocean Dipole. That's why I say that let us be technical, then we can discuss technical, but don't I, I, I request that it is not only a policymaker issue and politician issue and other like that. Let us talk like scientists and uh, who will actually make the policy in one day. It is not a blame game. It is about understanding the physics and then applying it to the proper thing. Okay. So this is my yeah, reservation is, on this particular discussion. Let us try mm, to thanks. understand the thing and then uh, try to, it has so many facets. I have just talked about only temperature because it is easier to appreciate. Uh, for the students at least there are many issues and there are uh, as just just keep it in mind that it's a highly non-linear system so it is very difficult to tell what is causing what and you need a deep study and there are lots of activities going on of late so we cannot just uh, make very loose comments in that sense as dr anivan has already said that uh, this is responsible or that is responsible students were asking about plastic bag this that these are certain things solid waste management these are local things that we can take care of immediately so that is why it, they are being emphasized but the main game is far bigger and main uh, physics is also far deep uh, to understand because uh, this is a main multi component system which are highly interacting and uh, it's very difficult to make So, okay. Thank you, ma'am. So again, network some network issues are there. 
so i think we should uh, end up wind up now uh, maybe if there is no such other discussion uh, from the point of organizing committee uh, let me uh, wind up this uh, session i would like to thanks our all the esteemed uh, resource persons uh, uh, well, especially otri uh, deshmukh madam uh, then uh, shubhdeep nandi sir and anirban guha sir so all i i would like to thanks from the organizing point of view and the uh, all the from the all the participants thank you madam namaskar sorry thank you thank you Thank you all. Thank you all for being with Thank us. Thank you all.